For him, the term hangry is short for horny and angry. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on the Treasury Gun Mandate. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you. Right, Max Zapata? Yes, sir. And Elon Gold in studio for surprisingly the first time, because I feel like I, I know you. Um, Elon has uh, a very funny stand-up special called Sets in the City, and uh, it's available on YouTube as we speak. Also, if you want to find out any live dates, uh, elongold.com is where you go. And I enjoyed his arc on Curb Your Enthusiasm. Oh, well, that's very nice. You know, that's very nice. <laughs> oh, I, oh no, I deci- no, I decided to do the whole interview as Jay Leno because I watch, I watch you guys. You know, I, watch, I, watch, I watch the show when you do. Uh, Jay, by the way, you know, I, I've never been to Burning Man, but I was a Burning Man. Folks! Um... <laughs> He did do an he, insane amount of like fiery hot Cheeto jokes and stuff. Yeah, after, of like, course. Because he's a joke machine. What I love I, about Jay is I he's get a machine. It. I he is a machine, yeah. and I respect the hell out of him. And he's yeah, me too. he's definitely a friend. But at certain point, you got to move past just the pun. You mean be a human? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I perhaps. believe he's a he's a robot where mm. you put in a quarter and he'll spit out a joke. I don't think he has actual human emotions. By the way, great guy, you know that. Yes. He's married and everything, but he's I don't think he bleeds. I think it's oil in there. Mm. I think he is one with his cars. Mm. And finally, one of his cars got angry at him. Oh. Uh, but you know, I love how he just said, you know, and then I went home, you know, I just went home. I was like, "Jay, go to the hospital. Yeah. Your face is on fire." No, nah, that's, that's fine. That's fine. And you called him out. What, what was the word you used? You said you are, what did you say? You said that something about him that he has, he's too, ah, oh, damn it, I gotta stoic? watch Stoic? Yes, that's the word. Ooh, wow. You said he was stoic, so stoic that he refused medical treatment. Now, if you tell Jay anything positive about him, mm-hmm. he'll spit it right back at you <laughs> and tell you no. Like, let's do a little experiment. Okay, go ahead. Jay, you're so stoic. Well, you know, I mean, stoic, I'm not really that stoic. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I really consider myself... Wait, what would he do? You're so magnanimous. Oh, uh, yeah, he just mag- not, like he rejects. Yeah, he rejects any. Yeah, he any rejects the good stuff. Yeah, he does reject compliments. And if you go like Jay, you know why? Your penis is so wide. Well, you know, I mean, I you know, I've, I've, I've looked at my penis before. I've had that. Like, you know, <laughs> right, that's what I've never really seen my penis uh, p- past my chin. You can't see it. Jay, uh, you, you know and Schindler you helping the Jews. Oh, you know, know the Jews and I are very close. You know how uh, you know when you have a big belly, you can't see your penis. Mm-hmm. That's him with the chin. Mm. He can't look past his chin. He cannot see and his, see own, his penis. own penis. That's interesting. I just thought of that. That's my favorite thing I'm going to say all day. Let's replace Forest for the Trees with uh, Leno's chin first cock in terms of the euphemism or, or the adage that we're saying. Like when your kid will now grow up in a world where you would use can't see the forest for the trees, right. but they would substitute it with uh, can't see can't past see. <laughs> can't see his cock past Leno's chin, <laughs> and then like people on CNN would go, "You're right, that senator's yeah. horrible." <laughs> it's going to be Wolf Blitzer saying that. Well said. Yeah. yeah. Um, by the way, because most of your people, most of your audience doesn't know who I am, mm. I tend to get very insecure. So my go-to is impressions. Mm. Like like when I started out doing stand-up, I never spoke as myself. I just did impressions one after the other. I'd go on stage just do impressions and leave mm. so i feel i'm feeling that insecurity right now so can i go on to my next one now yes okay here we go oh uh, well this is very exciting robin mm. let How me tell start. you something this adam carolla uh this guy has had some career robin i mean he was around before they invented radio <laughs> i think he did silent films with buster keaton uh you know what howard yeah. does when he's done with the interview yeah. he goes well, you've said it well, all. Well, we've yeah. said we've done it all. You've said it all. I've only been here for nine minutes. <laughs> <We've been here. laughs> no, no. I yeah. didn't even launch into my story. Uh, well, we've said it all in eight minutes. Uh, no, I love Howard. That should be, I would like to adopt that. Yeah. I wouldn't use it in the studio. I would use it personally. Right. You know, like. When, That's a good way to end the conversation. When your wife called. <laughs> right, right. To to Honey, uh, we've said it all. Said it I all. think we can like, get off I'm, the phone I'm, now, I'm, right, Robin? <laughs> he says Robin like people say, like like he's like a frog instead of saying ribbit. He said, let me tell you something, Robin. Everything is Robin. Uh, Robin, this is so exciting, Robin. Um, but he's very angry at all podcasts because he feels like the podcasters have stolen, as if you weren't in radio for 30 years first. 
Oh, you know me. what I mean? Yeah. No, everybody. He's yes. like mad at anyone with a podcast. Yeah. Well, I got to tell you, there's a few dudes, and they're not going to be around that much longer, that are old school radio guys. Uh-huh. And even though they may talk about Cardi B, they're sort of back right. in the 20s, and they look at radio, and Howard's this way, Jimmy Kimmel's a radio guy. Like they, oh, yeah. they, they look at radio with a reverence, with a seriousness, with a sort of protocol, and radio had a bunch of rules, and everyone followed those rules for a million years, and at some point, it just turned into a free-form gangbang, <laughs> and everyone started broadcasting. Do you have a tape recorder at home? Right. That was it. You had a tape recorder, whatever it was. That's why I was always, like, against podcasts, because I always thought that, like, you know, show business, even though I hate gatekeepers, I hate every executive, and every studio exec, every development exec, but there is, like, a, a not a protocol, but, like, a way that you have to earn something to get it. You can't just say, I'm going to do this, and then right. hit record and do it, but nowadays you can, and that's the same with TikTokers and Instagram. There is no more Hollywood, No really. barrier to There's entry. no barrier to entry. If you have any sort of talent or nice tits, you right. could be famous. I have both. <laughs> <laughs> but it is kind of like saying... There are no more health codes or permits or regulations. If you want to sell tacos and booze, go ahead and sell it from your front porch or sell it from your apartment ever. And so part of it's like, Jesus Christ, that is the Wild West. But then there's a part where you go, well, let's see who sells the most tacos and right. booze. You know, because right. that, that is You have always, to deliver. That's the caveat. Yeah, the, the product anybody, has to be good. That's sort of like saying anyone can try out for the Yankees. I know, but who's starting in center field? Right. That's the issue. Not me. Uh, but What's e happening? Elon, Should how I do, do more impressions? No. Well, <laughs> if you do Larry David, that'll help here. I don't really do a Larry. But you're... I do a Jerry. Oh. This is crazy. Jerry has a very nasal voice. Mm -hmm. Very nasal. Very confident. Mm -hmm. There are certain people you could just do nasal. Like Michael K talks like he's got a very bad head cold. Mm -hmm. Michael <laughs> right. K. Yeah. Right. He, he, there's something he's got to blow his nose. Um, <laughs> I've only seen him on screen once, and that was on... Uh, what are you the, talking about? Michael Caine. You've seen one of one Michael, Michael Caine's Kane 738 one, movies? One movie. You never saw one. Dirty Rotten Scoundrels with Steve Martin? You never, you never saw the blame it on Rio. I only saw blame she it was on only Rio. seventeen years. <laughs> blame old. it on Rio is the only she Michael Caine movie I've ever seen. She, it's also the Jeffrey Epstein story. She was only sixteen years old. Uh, anyway, no, how do you not see Michael Caine movies? I'm just like, making that up. Oh, okay, fine. I've seen everyone. Oh, that was a joke because he was he's in a lot of movies. I it's I, early well, in the morning for I, me. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. Was he in husband, Crimes and Misdemeanors? No, husbands yeah, and wives. Yeah, he was or, in some Woody Allen. Yeah, but, yeah he, I mean. <clears throat> That's crazy. You, know, you, you, know, you make a joke and then it <clears throat> goes over my head. <laughs> I'm telling a, a true story in my act now that has Woody Allen as a punchline. First of all, it's sad when one of the greatest to ever do it, people don't know. It's, mm. it's just frustrating. Oh, your audience. My audience. Or any audience. You go to the Laugh Factory. And then all of a sudden. Well, the Laugh Factory is a weird oh, it's, it's a, it's pe It's people who didn't get into the club. Right. Right? And they're dressed for the club. Yeah. They go, how about a comedy club? We didn't get, we were online, the bouncers didn't let us in. How about a comedy club? Right. It's yeah. that kind of, it's the, it, listen, it's my favorite room in LA. It's like, I have a cellar, the cellar is my home in New York, mm -hmm. and Laugh Factory is my home here. But the, the clientele, you know, yes. some, some, some of them are just like, yeah, we didn't get into the club. So I'm doing Woody Allen impressions, and they just stare at me. Mm. They stare like I have it. This is a true story that I turned like into sort of a bit. You know how we do that. Mm -hmm. We take stories, turn them into bits. So I was in Kentucky and I get off stage and the guy who like hired me for this event, he says to me, and this is like verbatim, there's barely any embellishment in this. He goes, you know why I brought you Jews down here? Wow. Yeah. And I said, oh, are there others? Mm -hmm. Like I was in the ground. It was just me. It right. was just me. And he goes, because you Jews is funny. Uh, I mean, think about all them funny Jews. You got Jerry Steinenfeld, Adam uh, Sandlerberg, Ben Stiller Stein. He was adding <laughs> right. Jewiness to already pretty Jewy names. And then he goes, in fact, you Jews is funny as hell, which, by the way, is a place you're going to burn. Really? Yeah, and then I just took a beat, and I just stared at him, and he goes, unless you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And I just turned into Woody Allen and went, I only accept Visa and MasterCard. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, you know, they only like Jews here in Kentucky. But anyway, so I do that wow. in the punchline. And when I'm performing for like other Jews or old Jews, they'll go, oh, that's wonderful. What you? Right. But at the Laugh Factory, it's crickets. It's like I was watching uh, Jay Moore do his buddy Hackett, which is exquisite. I mean, it's exquisite. But <laughs> you understand that yeah. no one is yeah. appreciating this. I know. No one. And guys like me and Jay, because of our old age, yes. we grew up with all these people that we admired. So that's our wheelhouse. Those are our guys. You know, my guys were Charles Grodin from Midnight Run. But I right. do Charles Grodin now, and it's just blank stares. And I, I really I really don't appreciate it. A lot of people, a lot of people don't know Charles Grodin, but he was you know, he was in a lot of movies. I was, You're I even was, looking at me like, well, who's no, he doing? <laughs> well, I know Charles Grodin. I was attacked on a short-lived talk show. Tell me. I don't know, Dawson or Ben, if you can find. I think, Chris, I think we've aired this before. Yeah, but funny. I was on Charles Grodin. Charles Grodin had like a CNN. Yeah. 10 p.m. CNBC. CNBC yeah. late night kind of talk. It was kind of Larry King, but it was Charles Grodin. But he would just scream about OJ. The and entire show. I, I mean, OJ. Sin, I really, uh, I really don't appreciate. OJ. I was invited as a yeah. guest to yeah. come on his oh, wow. show in 1998 or something, and I just like my policy was uh, no policy. So it's like, you want me to come on a show? Like what day? The Thursday? No, oh, yeah, I'm around, and I would just drive down the hill and go do it. It was, it was yeah, NBC. And same thing happened to me here. I went on a set and he just started attacking me. <laughs> wow! Uh, on the air, he was an angry guy. Like in what way though? You about know, what? Yeah, you, what was his... you know, at a certain point, when you get too old and things were 25 years ago, you don't have specifics, you have feelings. Mm -hmm. Like like you, if you went to your high school reunion and you ran into guys, you wouldn't have really specific events. You'd have, oh, that dude's a douche. You know <laughs> what I mean? But I, I can't really explain if he gave me a wedgie right. or he banged my girlfriend. But, but it was a negative. Like, like no. the vibe. Like, the I, but yelling at you? I, I don't know. May, if we can find you it, gotta we'll find see. that clip. We'll my story with Grodin is I used to do uh, every Who now and then. passed recently? Grodin, Grodin. Grodin, like a year a year or two ago. Yes. So every now and then I would do the, uh, the lips on the Conan O'Brien show. You know, mm, the old late right. night show. Mm -hmm. So Smigel was the guy. He was right. the guy who did Dole and Clinton, and he's right. a genius. He's the best. But whenever Smigel couldn't do someone, they would call me to do it. The so they said, right. we want you to do a Charles Grodin. Mm -hmm. And Smigel called me and said, but Grodin is the guest. He's the first guest. Oh, boy. And I said, oh, you, you don't want me to do <laughs> Grodin lips. He doesn't like impressions of him. And they're like, how do you know? Because I did that CNBC show when um, Brandon Tartikoff the late, great Brandon Tartikoff, head of NBC, was the guest host. Mm -hmm. and, and he asked me, he said, would you do the cold open as Charles Grodin introducing me? So I did it, and it was fun. And then like two days later, Grodin came back, and they went, you got to see this kid. He just did you. And he goes, I'm not going to watch that. I don't want to watch it. I don't want to watch an impression. I'm, I'm going to be self-conscious. I'll never be able to act in another movie. I'll just be thinking about him doing me instead of me doing me. I'm not going to. So, so he was very angry. He goes, I, I, I will not watch it. So I said, Smigel, you, you, you don't want to, you know, bum rush him with this impression that he doesn't want to see. He goes, don't worry about it. So I get there yeah. and I do it. And it was really fun. And then he comes out and Conan introduces him. He refuses to sit for the first two minutes of his segment. That's the Charles he Grodin who interviewed me in 97. Right, and he goes, I was ambushed. I was, I, and I don't, pre I don't sound like, do I sound like that? I don't sound like that. And he <laughs> refused to sit and he was so angry and I just backstage, I went, and I told you. Not, but anyway, he turns everything into a bit. Like every time he was on Letterman, you never, is this a bit? Is he really angry at Dave? But it was a bit. It was always a bit, but it's also, he was an angry old man when he at birth. Like yes. he was born an angry old man, a, a balding angry old man. Yeah, yeah, at yeah. birth. Yes, yes. but yeah. Midnight Run, arguably, come on, top ten. It's a, it's like nine in my list. It's a great film, wall to wall. It's got tons of comedy, tons of intrigue, tons yeah. of acting. De Niro it's got, and him. It's got fifteen different elements yeah. going, and it's it's in the dustbin of it, obscurity. People don't put it on their list. It's crazy. Doesn't make the rotation Kids, on cable. I promise you. I think it's on one of the streamers. Please watch it. Please watch the scene. I'm not saying I'm your account. If I were your account, I'm not. Say, I'm not saying I am your account. But if I were your account, the, you know, the restaurant business is a very tricky business. I'm doing now. Jay Moore doing Buddy Hackett, where everyone's <laughs> tuning out now. 
this might be your lowest rated podcast ever. He did everyone that he's he's doing Gene Wilder. Are you crazy? Are you nuts? No. Um all right. The uh what but else? how do you get on to curb? That's what I wanted to do. You the, got me on to grow, and I want yeah, to get you on great. to curb. The, thank you so much. That's the uh eight hundred billion dollar question that is it's for another time. You know why? Because it's a it's an hour long story. I'll give you the, the quick version, but yeah. it's literally an hour long story that spans years of wanting to be on and trying to be on and calling the agents and managers, just get me an audition, just get me a, right. I have to be a part of this. And it was crazy because my son, who's now 22, and he was 15, got hooked on Curb. They just started, you know, the kids, they get into these shows yes. now that, with the office and the friends, and they just and get, that's what my kids do. You know what yeah. I mean? And Absolutely. it's like, no, these shows are 30 years old, but they get into it. And uh, he- I, I did, sorry, have no. a, a good, I walked in and my daughter was watching Breaking Bad. Mm-hmm. And I was like, do you just get started on Breaking Bad? And she's like, yeah. Now, for us, we had I Love Lucy or The Monsters. <laughs> I'm not or, that old. <laughs> uh, no, the reruns. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, like, fine. They, yeah, they, All in the Family. Well, you, yeah, you, the reruns. You got you to gotta understand that when you're talking about Friends and you're talking about The Office, you talk about Breaking Bad, reruns. we're going back 15 years Absolutely. now. So they're watching it 15 years on, yeah. and I was that way. But we had shitty sitcoms. Yes. We, we were watching McHale's Navy. Right. They're actually watching really funny, high-end quality yeah. comedy. Comedy. Yeah. So yeah. they're into it. Yeah. It doesn't get better than The Office and Curb. And they reject comedies that aren't great. Although what? the weird thing is this kind of new generation doesn't love Seinfeld, the show. Oh, which really? Which is weird to yeah, me. Yeah, it's true. They're, it, they're, right? They're they watch the shit out of Friends right. and The Office, but not so much Seinfeld. Now they're on to... Uh, Breaking Bad. Yeah, Breaking Bad I, and I, Curb. And, I was going to yeah. say, I shot a thing with Brian Krantz in a crowdfunding thing years ago, like 10 years ago for a movie I was doing. Coolest guy, right? He, the greatest guy in the world. But for a change, I was able to get a little traction with my 16-year-old daughter because I said, you like Breaking Bad? Yeah. You like Brian Krantz? Yeah, I love it. Oh, let me show you a little blast from the past. And I pulled my phone out oh. and I showed her some porn and then I quickly <laughs> changed yeah. close the that screen. Tab. Yeah, close that tab. And then I showed her me and Cranston doing yeah. their crowdfunding thing. And she, for, for a millisecond, was impressed. Yeah. Isn't it crazy what makes your kids look at you like you're a hero when well, it, you think it's also always... think it's also kind of funny, too, is when I was young, no adult danced for me. Like, when I see my daughter and she's like, I, uh, I want to go to Stagecoach. And uh, Luke Bryant's on the, Luke Bryant was on the show a year ago. I, could, I bet I could, I bet I could reach out to Luke Bryant's people. <laughs> right. My, my my dad, like I said, my dad, can I get a ride to Van Nuys? Fuck off. Right. And go back to watching TV. Right. Like he didn't pop up and go, I know a guy in Van Nuys. Right. <laughs> we could work this out. It's so crazy where these kids can meet their heroes. Like I just called Brian Cranston's agent and he was doing a play here in LA. And my son's obsessed with Breaking Bad. So I go, you want to meet him? Like, you never got to meet, you know, John Ritter when you were watching Three's. You never got oh, to you... meet any, you know, even even uh, who Michael Gross I wanted to meet <laughs> from Family Time. Hey, you never I, got I, to the meet. The dad from Family If I said to my... If I said to my dad, I'd like to meet John Ritter when I was 13, he'd go, yeah, I'd like to meet the... Abraham fucking Lincoln. <laughs> yeah, fuck off. Right, like, exactly. Be, there'd be nothing. We make these kids' dream come true. Okay, so back to the kid. Wait, he says hold on, to, hold sure, on. We have one, a call? Are we getting second. a call? Is Vinny on line one? Is that true? Vinny Tortorich? Is he on line uh, he, well, He's zooming in. This is oh, very zooming. exciting, brother. Oh, he's zooming we, in. We're taking calls now. Oh, he's zooming in. Vinny. Hey, now. Vinny Tortorich? How are you? We'll uh, pot him yeah, up. Yeah, it looks like he's muted still. All right. Vinny's in Europe, so I hear. Yeah. Show off. <laughs> <laughs> Vinny, if you unmute, are there you unmuted? I, I'm here, guys. How are you doing, man? Good. All right. So, Elon Gold, uh, Vinny Tortorich, Vinny's Hi, Vinny. a nutrition expert. Who, oh, my God. Fitness expert who's on quite frequently. And I thought of you last night as I was looking at the new food pyramid, essentially, which is put out by Tufts University, a guy named Pro- Professor uh, Masafaria, yeah. is it? And the scary part is he's uh, going to be the White House co-chair for nutrition and health. And I looked at this p- 
pyramid, so to speak, this graph, and basically saying, here's something you can eat all day, every day, and here's stuff to eat in moderation, and here's stuff to kind of steer clear of. So for instance, at the very top, at 100%, meaning that's the highest score you can get, kale, all right, makes yeah. makes sense to me. Uh, but then you go to the bottom, and it's at ground beef, which is a lot of good protein. And Vinny, I know you've had a chance to look at this thing. It's it's mind-numbing. The third best thing you can consume is orange juice, which is nothing but sugar yeah. and water. And then the fourth is frosted mini wheats, which is why <laughs> Vinny thought the fourth best at, at like 87%, 83% is why Vinny thought this was a joke. Sweet potato fries, non-frozen, uh, sorry, non-fat frozen yogurt, uh, Honey Nut Cheerios coming in in like seventh place at 73. And at the bottom, at the bottom of things you should rarely eat is a whole egg fried in butter. And this is when I said Vinny is going to blow his fucking stack when he sees this. Vinny, can you explain this first off in any way, shape, or form? Um, first off, I have to say this. <clears throat> in, in all the years I've been coming on your show, uh, the great uh, Howie Mandel always told me never show up to do any broadcast drunk. Hmm. Um, but I'm in England at a funeral with my in-laws, and I've had drinks. <laughs> <laughs> the time difference, um, fine. Yeah, it's okay. I popped uh, an edible a half it's, hour it's, ago, uh, so we're even here in the evening. Um, so, by the um, way, Vinny, I'm, I just want you to know, so, Vinny, I just want you to know people were hanging uh, on the edge of their seats to hear how I got onto Curb, and now they're like, we don't care about how, how to live longer. We want to hear the <laughs> Curb story. But go ahead, because I had, a, I have an issue, and I, I want to ask you about this, but when you answer this question, the, the follow-up question is, my doctor said to me, your cholesterol is high, stop smoking cigars, and I left him, because I went, cigars has nothing to do with cholesterol. Cigars actually reduces stress and is the thing that I enjoy most in life. So you're wrong, and I just left him. Do you agree with cigars and cholesterol? There's no correlation. Thank first you. First off, a cigar is vegan. Um, <laughs> so that's first and foremost. It starts off very green. A cigar will give you mouth cancer. Okay, good. And it may give you a few other cancers. What, what do I need my mouth for? Do, yeah. What it will not do is cause any kind of cholesterol problem. So... Mm. You need to find another doctor. I did. Let's start with that. Um, so, no, folks, cigars are not healthy. I'm Thank not giving you. Elon. Uh, yes, you are. Yeah. I'm not telling them to go buy every Fuente Opus X that was ever made. Nice. Nice reference. <laughs> but what about the list? Sorry. Okay, sorry. Back to the okay, list. Let's go the list is the life, list. you know, they say. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Go ahead. All right. So I'm going to give your audience a quick lesson. Glycemic index. A zero equals zero glycemic index load. No, no load, no spike, no nothing. A 100 is sugar. So we have zero on one end, on the other end, sugar at 100. Just keep those two numbers in mind. Watermelon, which is right behind kale on the list, because let's face it, no one's going to eat kale. Right. At 99, number two is watermelon for what you should number be two. eating. Watermelon comes in between 50 and 72 on a glycemic scale. So sugar being 100, this is between 50% and 72% of just eating pure sugar. Now, you mentioned, uh, I think you mentioned orange juice. Yes. Orange juice starts at around 75. It can go as high as 85. That's it's number three. It's almost like drinking pure sugar. Right. The only reason it's not like eating pure sugar is because there's a little liquid in it. But it's the, isn't there a difference between the refined uh, sugar I, I and the I, orange juice sugar? I mean, there's such a distinction between the sugars. You can't compare white refined sugar to the natural sugar that's in oranges. That's good for you. White sugar is natural, Elon. I it's know, but, no, but you know what I mean. Like fruits. Cocaine it's is so natural. What, right. what are we well, getting to? No, no. Here's, <laughs> let, me, let me intervene here. Yeah. I okay. grew up where Elon and I, Elon, sorry. Yeah, Elon. I, I, Elon. <laughs> we're about, this, we're about the same we're age bracket. Yeah. Vinny as well. I grew up with a mom that would say, you cannot have white sugar. That's refined. You can have as much brown sugar as you want, which is white sugar with molasses in it. <laughs> and by, by all means, dip yourself in honey and roll yourself in oats. Honey is good for it. Yeah. What Vinny is saying, to your liver, honey hits it 
the same way mm. white sugar hits it. Wow. And that's why you like it. Right. Like if someone goes, well, this smoothie tastes like shit, and I don't want to put white sugar in it, but I'll put dump a bunch of honey in it. Hey, it tastes fantastic. It's mm. like, yeah. There's a reason. Why do they, or, don't let me put words in your mouth. But why do they say eat Vinny. your fruits and vegetables, except don't eat your fruits because it's high in sugar? And like, what is that? Certain fruits. Okay, fine. Go Vinny ahead. Will tell that, you. That's something else we would lie to about Elon. You see, tough, um, Tufts University should be ashamed of themselves. You guys, Adam, you may remember I complained about this on the show. I'm, I'm saying this because not to make myself right, but to let Elon understand. Here's the deal. Back when we had the last election, when they were trying to figure out which Democratic candidate would run against Trump, they were all saying, we're going to be vegan. We're going to we're going to get meat out of school, meatless Mondays, meatless Fridays. Meat's going to be out of here. No more meat. Right. And I was sitting there going, what's in it for them? I didn't think it was going to happen. The first time this particular compass scale came to me was about three months ago. It was sent to me by Nina Teichels, uh, a nutritionist expert, and I thought she was joking. I, I said, oh, come on, who made this up? And she goes, no, 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 this is what they're coming out with. She got it early because she runs the Nutrition Coalition. I thought she was playing some kind of joke on me. I didn't think this was real. Honey Nut Cheerios, 74. Lucky Charms, they don't even give that a number. It's so high. Now, let me take it in the opposite direction, because we're going to use Elon over there as For, an example. Can I ask quickly, first off, yeah. why the brand names? Why <laughs> Frosted Mini Weeds, Honey Nut yeah. Cheerios, Lucky Charms? These are brand ooh, names. Ooh, ooh, me, 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 Go me, ahead. me. I got Go an ahead. answer. Go ahead. I got an answer. Because those fuckwads <laughs> gives yeah. money to the other fuckwads who squint their eyes and say it's okay. And if you look, it always sounds like I have a tent hat on. But I've been saying this to you for seven years. Have I? Have you found anything I've said in seven years not true? No, but I, I do. I'm now picturing your wife standing uh, over an open coffin and hearing <laughs> your mu muffled voice. She's fuckwads oh, with her glycemic in a fucking Vinny. Can't give it a break. You just can't give it a break. Can't put grandma on the ground without Vinny yelling about glycemic fucking index no. in the next room. No. All right, sorry. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> Pretty much what happens. Yeah. Now, Elon, you were talking about y your cholesterol, right? So yeah. beef, beef has a glycemic index. You want to guess at what it is? 83. You're close. It's zero. Wow. It's zero. Wow. Um, cheddar cheese, you want to guess what that is? I'm going to I'm going to go with 0 again for 200 Bob. I'm going to give it to you because it's between 0 and 7. Wow. Beef and That's cheddar cheese are at the bottom of of this. At the bottom. They, they tell you to don't even look at this food. Whole eggs cooked in butter. You want to guess what that is? Mm -mm. That's a 0. Mm. You, you see what we're doing here? We took the best foods and here's what they're doing. I put this up on my Instagram just yesterday. I was walking around in a field with a bunch of cattle in the British countryside. And I took a quick video and I said, here's the deal. <clears throat> the vegans came out and said, beef will kill you. And then guys like me came on the internet and said, hey, eat mostly beef. Get away from all the other stuff. You're not going to die of cholesterol poisoning, which is not even a thing. You're not going to. Okay. Okay. So we started winning at that game. It's like, oh, my God, there's hundreds of thousands of people who have lost tens of millions of pounds listening to these idiots. So they went, we got to change our narrative. Then they went, wait, hang on. It might not kill you, but it's going to melt the polar ice caps. Mm -hmm. You see what they did? Yes. Right. They switched They're changing it. the narrative because it ain't working. The, that is fascinating how they they took the beef industry and made it a, a global warming issue. Yeah. They, they went when I was growing up is meat is murder, high cholesterol, right. animal fat, butter, whole milk, whole whole yogurt, everything bad, 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 bad. And people went, fuck it, it's yummy and I'm not dying and I feel better and I've lost weight. And they go, hmm, mm, well, then what yeah. about the polar bears? Well, right. Well, yeah, they how switch. Do, what about the earth? Do you like the earth? It's going <laughs> well, away because of your burgers. <laughs> your and you know, you make mentioned Trump and this looks like it's my diet. You look you look at this and we got cheddar cheese which I start my day
day with. <laughs> Every day I start with a little dollop of cheddar cheese, and then I have a whole egg fried in butter, ice cream cone with nuts, and it's very good. And people say it's not well. It's not going to do well for you. Not going to do well. And it did very well for me. <laughs> All right. You mentioned Trump. I had to pull it out. Well. Yeah, we're going to go to him more than once. Go in the ahead. Of the show. <laughs> Absolutely. But all right. So just so you guys know why Vinny's going out of his mind. Yeah, because I still don't understand this. Is this good for you? Is it bad? I, I'm not following egg, it. I, look, here's here's what it is. Whole egg fried in butter, that's 28. That's a low score. But the egg substitute fried in vegetable oil, which is the worst you can do. The worst. Is up at 69. So something... Look, l- let me explain what, what this is. This isn't... It's like when Dr. Fauci said, we don't know anything about natural immunity. We're going to have to wait and see. You're too smart. You're lying. Mm-hmm. Something's going on. There's something else afoot here. Okay, you want people vaccinated. And there's a lot of people who got COVID and feel like maybe I shouldn't get a vaccination because I have natural immunity. So you lied. You took a smart guy and you lied to push an agenda. So when you have guys that are professors at Tufts University saying patently insane and semi-retarded things, Mm -hmm. they're not stupid. The game is stupid or liar. That's my game. He's lying. Now, the next question is, is why is he lying? Right. Who's giving him the money? How's the funding? What's going on? He got himself a gig at the White House. Mm -hmm. Who is this benefiting? That's that's the next question. You can't just yeah. stop at the lie. If he's just lying, he's an insane professor. And it benefits whom, Vinny? It benefits the food companies, and it also benefits the drug companies. Elon, look at that list that Adam has in front of him. Yes. You might see where they're listing M&Ms as being a, a more healthy food than eggs, beef, or um <clears throat> Uh, cheese. We're M and M's. Do you guys yeah. see the that? almond M and M's? Oh, wow. almond M and M's. Right, yeah. So when I was a kid, we had we had interstitials on cartoons. You know, hanker for a hunk of cheese, get protein, yes. eat stuff. Right. All of that is gone. Hmm. Right. Mm. You know, now we're telling. And if you think I'm kidding, it doesn't take a deep dive. You could go look up the AHA, the American Heart Association, and the ADA, the American Diabetes Association, and look at who's sponsoring them. It's the Siri, it's Mars, Candy Bar, it's Coca-Cola, it's Pepsi. They're taking money from everybody. That that's who's giving the money to the people who are making the rules. So anytime you hear anything coming out of Tufts, out of Harvard, out of any of these places, and by the way, this is not a plug for my movie. This is for you, Elon. Go watch my third movie, which is called Beyond Impossible. And you'll see the number <laughs> of animals that must die before oh. you get Tofurky. Wow. And I'm not making this By up. the way, Beyond Impossible no is a race. great title. Yeah. But for an action film. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Bruce like with, Willis yeah, a few years Dolph ago, Lundgren. trapped in a tunnel. So who are we to believe out? about what the hell to eat? I, I'm, I'm lost. I believe Vinny. All right, okay, let, yeah. let me let me just shout from the mountaintop for a second here. And just to bolster this, yesterday we were playing a clip, and the clip was a whistleblower who worked for Coca-Cola explaining that Coca-Cola would dump <clears throat> off tons of cash at the NAACP or whatever office and then get them to call opponents of their sugar bill or whatever it is racist. So he also mentioned that Coca-Cola and these, you know, companies, mm-hmm. Procter & Gamble, whoever it is, spend way, way outspend the government in terms of research. And he went on to say, why are they, why are they outspending the government on research so they can get the results that they want? So they go to Tufts, they give them the money. Did, Think no further than cigarette companies going right. to scientists right. saying that nicotine's not addictive and cigarettes are good for you. Yes, they're paying for this. So you should not believe what Tufts says because we don't want, they don't, Mark Garagos has paid experts in court. You shouldn't believe them either. Of course. He, he pays them yeah, to tell them what, what you want. Especially these days, these colleges, like my son, Brandon, was just reading me a list of words that Stanford came out with that are no longer acceptable. <laughs> yes, One know. of the words was lame. Lame. Yes, lame. Lame. But tell man. us what it is. What do you mean? It's because of... It's uh, lame, but what's the word? No, the, the connotation is that you have something handicapped or... But just know. tell us the word that's so lame that you won't even say it. The word that's so lame? 
I just don't. keep saying the word is yeah. lame, but you won't tell us the word. Oh, yeah, lame? what's the word? Yeah, what's the word? Are we doing an Abbott and Costello? Yes. Thing? Okay, I'm, I'm, again, I'm very slow on this. Uh, but, you know, listen. We got, the band, the, we got the band, the guess who, coming in the second break. So. Sorry. But, Who's that? You know, Spaz was on that list. Spaz. Everything, everything is, Spaz. Everything, everything is on there. Mm-hmm. It's horrible. So why are you even listening to these ga- goddamn colleges? Now, li- 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 listen to me. Here's here's the new world order in terms of information. If you would like to find out what is going on with somebody, find the person or information about COVID, find the person who was deplatformed from Twitter mm-hmm. and shouted down by the WHO and the CDC and go find out what that person is saying. And if you want to find out what's going on with nutrition, don't go to the government website, find the pyramid or go to the Tufts bought and paid for guy. Go find Vinny Tortorich and many others who are the ones being called heretics by these guys and figure out what they have to say. That's the new world yeah. order. All right, Vinny, I'll let you get uh, back to your grieving. Wait, Adam, <laughs> let me just say this. Uh, Chris, Chris, yeah. Give uh, give Elon my phone number, please. If you want me to get you to a doctor who understands how to read a cholesterol score, thank you. I have I have doctors all over the country that I send people to. I'm in. These are not quacks and cooks. These are actual surgeons, heart surgeons. Get my number. Say hey, it's Elon. I'm in. But Vinny, you also know the truth about cigars. Because I once yeah, I asked do. a top ENT and I said, is this going to give me problems with the mouth and the throat? And how often do you see it from cigar smokers? And he goes, honestly, it's so rare. He said, but when I did my residency in Florida and there were all these old people who drank heavily and had cigars, I saw it all the time. So it's the combo that's really, you know what I mean? The alcohol tears away at the protective layer and then the tobacco comes in. But you know that having one or two cigars a week ain't going to kill anybody. You know that. The oldest man in the United States is uh, uh, he smokes five cigars a day and uh, none of them are as nice as the one you have there. Thank you. He, he's got the non hand roll yeah. ones like King Edwards. Dawson's yeah. not that. And really Burl really and Caesar and George Burl. All, all the guys. Great. Winston Churchill spoke 10 a day or something like that. Uh, listen, yeah. you have a green light to smoke out Thank in this you. group. Uh, Beyond Impossible and a FADA documentary available for rent on, or you can buy it, it. Amazon. Nice. And he's got a great Prager U video out called America's Fat. Love Prager But you don't have to be. Uh, Vinny Tortorich, thank you for taking time. Thanks, Vinny. Vinny. Great meeting you. Send my love to your (laughs) in-laws. Will do, thanks. (laughs) Yeah. All right. uh, Let's take a quick break. We'll come back with uh, Elon and Chris right after this. I have one rule in my house with my kids. No racial slurs out of their mouths. None. Ever. My kids aren't even allowed to use the word vinegar with the hard R. (laughs) Oh, yeah. They got to be like, hey, Dad, can you pass the vinegar? (laughs) Excuse me? Vinegar, please. That's better. I love watching the people who are afraid to laugh at this. The people who are going, can an audience member get canceled for laughing at racial humor? It's okay, it's okay. The rest of you are going, what kids are asking for vinegar exactly? Elon Gold on the Adam Carolla Show. Now that's Ooh, funny. That was fun. You can't say that word anymore in comedy, which is so insane to me. The N word? Yeah, because the whole point, the whole point is not that there are words that you're not allowed to say. George Carlin taught us that, but that you have a message. And if your heart is in the right place, for example, if you're talking about racism and how against racism you are, you are allowed to use any word you can to make your point. And mm-hmm. if your point is, I don't like this word, and I think it's deplorable and dehumanizing and degrading and should never be used by people. I, as I always say, someone asks me, do you ever use the N-word? I said, not personally, but professionally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because I want to make these points that I can't stand racial slurs and I don't let my kids. But then the, the, the Wokies, they go nuts if you're even on the right side of it and you're saying the word. They don't care yeah. about context. They don't care about anything. And, somebody and it's, else. It's, it's all context. Yeah. But the blacks, the blacks. The blacks love me, so don't talk about them. Right, but I will say this. 
They're you know, I love the blacks, and they're doing some very good things and also some bad things. And, you know, you look at these black people, and you look at them, and you say, what do they want? Um, the N-word with the blacks is yeah. basically the C-word with chicks. Is it? It's close. I don't know about it's, that. It's a no-fly zone yeah. for a heterosexual white guy in, in any arena. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Right. You don't want to use that word with your wife, but there's a huge difference between those two words. Because no, I'm saying the, the white chick hates the C word almost as much as the black guy hates right. the N word. That's what I'm, right. what I'm saying. Except the, white chicks don't call each other cunt. That's, that's the, the distinction. That's, that's a, they use the yeah, shit out of cunt. it. Yeah, <laughs> it's weird. They don't it's do weird. that. Hey, my cunty. Hey, my cunty. Right. Yeah. So, cunt, please. That, that's yeah. that is a difference. All right. So we're getting back to Kurt. Okay. And by the way, that full special is available on YouTube. Oh, that's right. But only because Netflix said no. Right. Uh, isn't it crazy that you can't get a unless you're like Chappelle or Rock or something? You can't get a special on Netflix anymore. And that's why it was we talked about at the beginning. Like, what you had a special? What was it on? Comedy Central? Uh, Comedy. I, I probably just released oh, you it. Put it out. Yes. Yeah, put it out. But uh, not. Talk but about that's what we were talking about. The so way. the cool thing about that is, well, the gatekeepers said no. I'll go right to the fans. You know what I mean? It's like you don't yeah. have to do anything. Well, I think these people are going to shoot themselves in their own foot mm -hmm. eventually because what they what they did. It's what Hollywood did. It's, you know, I don't know. When I was a kid, every human being watched the Oscars. Right. Now no they, they get a seven share or something right. because no one gives a fuck anymore because right. they fucked up their own Tiffany enterprise. Like yeah. they had a, a, they had a Fabergé egg and they woke it up and they fucked it up. Right. So what Netflix does is it's not pure meritocracy it's like look no. we're we're low on asian comedians we're low on black feeling we need some transgender whatever it is fine but you've hurt the product right because it's now not who's the funniest right it's who's the funniest and lesbian gay right. straight you know right. uh, whatever american indian whatever so right. they did it and then what ends up happening is the product suffers mm -hmm. because it has to suffer. So you're picking Moonlight is film of the year. 92% of America has not seen it. Right. And the 8% the that has thought it was okay, but not picture of the year. And now there's a tune out factor. So you fucked up your own product. Right. And that's what Netflix will do and has been doing. And that's also... The good comedians, the funny comedians, which is not to say you can't be American Indian and funny. Mm -hmm. You just can't factor it in to right. the point that they're factoring. They're going to drift off to other platforms and they're going to lose. Netflix is going to lose share. Yeah. People are not happy with that because you could sniff it out. You could sniff yes. out that they're just checking the diversity card and I'm, it's not always funny. We're getting back to Kerr. But By the I way, do did wanna, you tell I do your friend Jimmy that he should? Why bother hosting? Nobody's watching. <laughs> I'll be riding on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you want to hear a quick uh, I, Jimmy I story? Do, I do want we you guys. Story. I want a Jimmy story, yeah. but uh, Ben, this is an interesting thing. It's been vexing me, and I don't. I don't think I brought it up on the air, and I wrote it down uh, the other night, which is um, now. I'm all about uh, nobody's more tuned in to the wokeified score right. and how much we have to celebrate, like. What's the guy's name? The black guy who like wears the dresses and he's always like singing and oh, showing yeah. up at every whatever. He's not a superstar. He just needs to be at every single one of these events. Every red Billy, carpet. Billy yeah. Porter. Yes. Billy Porter. Yeah, Is it Billy right. Porter? Billy Porter. Who? Right. Yes. And By then the he way. walks in <laughs> yeah. wearing like hoop earrings right. and a skirt and a tuxedo top and they're like, Billy, so bold, so that Nobody in America knows what the fuck Billy Porter does. He doesn't stop. I don't know what he does. I thought there that is, is what he does. Uh, that's what he does. I know. But everyone else is there because they're George Clooney or something. Yeah. Like, I know what he does. I know what Mario Andretti does. Nobody knows what fucking Billy Porter does. But he's a he's a presenter. Yes. He asked me. And we all just sort of sit around and go, did I make that guy? I didn't sign off on him being a superstar. <laughs> I don't know what he we do, now, evidently, he does a little singing. and He does. He won a Tony for Kinky Boots. He's a great mm. uh, actor and performer. Can but I, there are many great actors yes, and true. performers, Why and we him? don't know who they are. Full disclosure, my younger brother dated him for two years. 
Are you shitting yeah, me? Yeah, that was his boyfriend, Billy. Before Are you? He, sh- yeah, before he was anything. Well, of course you're an expert of on course, Billy gonna, fucking Porter. Of course, Porter. Of course <laughs> I know. You let him go for a real <laughs> long time yeah, there. Brother was Billy banging him. Was. He was banging I was for wondering two how I found yeah. the only guy the who only knew guy everything knew. about Billy yeah, Porter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Kicky boots and then this. So yeah. Oh. He, had a, he was a singer. Your a, younger a, brother's yes. gay. I think so. Yeah. He was Although Billy Porter wears a lot of dresses. So, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. He's a musician. Ari. Yes, musician. Both my brothers Sorry. are musician. Ari, the great Sir Ari, uh, passed away of leukemia a year oh, and a half ago. Cigars? Did, huh? No, not cigars. He was cigars. smoking the other things. Uh, poles? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Turns out that could give you no. And uh, what do you say about Billy Porter? He loved him. Billy he deserves a, to beat the Oscars. Billy's a sweet man, but I understand what you're saying. Why is he the poster boy for everyone? Why is he the guy they're propping up when there are other people? Well, well what what I'm saying is is when you prop it up you go to woke middle america right. goes i don't know who this guy is so i'm not watching and this and is all off. this is a big this big woke show and i'm not into it anymore the, what i was trying to think of before we get back to curb yeah is the movie the movie emancipation now usually when you go on rotten tomatoes you can tell what the score is going to be because you know moonlight is going to score higher with the critics than it would with the audience right the audience would go yeah it's all right but the critics would go wait a minute we got a we got gay guys and yeah. they're black. So jack it up through the roof. So I can't remember what Moonlight is, but it'll be 97 with the critics and 71 with right. the people. And right. and you'll find it's about right. Like when it when it has a lot of themes, go to the people. Don't go to the theme. Emancipation is a heroic story about a runaway slave and blah, 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 which should be 100 on Rotten Tomatoes. Right. And I hear it's a great performance by Will Smith. Right? But we're also pissed at Will Smith. We're pissed because yeah. so, he smacked, he smacked another black man. So the so the, the reviews are lower. The, well, it's like they don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. It's like they don't know what to do with Tyler Perry. He's right. a gay black man, but the movies aren't very good. So how do we how do we you not give it a good love review? Medea goes I'm not to the Smithsonian in love with her. No, <laughs> but that's another conundrum for the reviewers. We've got the gay guy, the black guy, and and he's you know and and we have. I, I think it's not a good movie. I think with Tyler, we understand it's schlock, right. and we don't have to. To pay that in if you but if you look Smith, at emancipation, emancipation it's yeah. where it's like 47 yeah. across a drama the yeah. about slavery it was talk about he's going to be a he's going to early front runner yeah. for the oscar and everything yeah. 55 or fi- i don't know if it's at the people or the uh ben is it 46 46 credits uh critics uh 55 people right wow. okay so there's no way that movie pre-slapping wouldn't get under a 90 would get under a 90 right. yeah. but they didn't like the slap and my feeling with everything is to stop factoring everything else in right i i, I don't know if i should see this movie or not but you tell me critics and don't don't give me the sl- don't factor in the slap. I All still right. like a good Miramax movie. <laughs> Curb your, <laughs> I'm yeah. with you. Curb your enthusiasm. Oh wait, first, so my so my older brother Stephen Gold, the uh-huh. great Stephen Gold, uh, is a, a Grammy winning uh, composer of TV shows and did a couple of your shows, Crank Yankers. Oh, he did the Man Show. Him and Adam Schlesinger, the, right? The great late, of Wayne. Yes, who also passed away of COVID in March. Like one of the first. Okay. My one older my brother lost at his. Yeah, his. Yes, oh, the, uh, brilliant. Wayne. Adam, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, Fountains of Wayne. Fountains of Wayne. Adam Slesson. Yeah, he lost yeah. his brother yeah. and best friend in one year. It was not a fun oh year for God. him. Oh, my God. Yeah. So he uh, he was just telling me on the way, I go, I'm doing Corolla show. He goes, oh, he's so cool. Send him my love. I did both of his shows. And he said this, he told me this really funny story where when they were doing, uh, it was, I think, during Crank Anchors or The Man Show. And Adam was in, on an interview uh, and they said, what do you want for Hanukkah? And Adam said, uh, I want a Sarah Silverman blow-up doll. And Jimmy was dating Sarah at the time. Mm-hmm. And he said, that's the last time that they ever worked for Jimmy. And I was like, that's so weird. And I wanted to ask you about this because Jimmy loves a good joke, a good blow-up girlfriend mm. joke more than anybody. Mm. How did that affect it? Or like, wh- like, why would he be upset by that? It makes no sense to me. I don't know, but I asked your brother for that Billy Wild uh, blow-up doll. That's the he, other one. He seemed pretty pissed. So it's a two-way the street. Billy, uh, Porter Porter, the, okay. the Billy Porter Porter. The Billy Porter Billy Porter I got too many names doll. wrong. <laughs> yeah, All right, let's see. Okay, okay Kurt. I, I don't know. I, I've never heard that one. Yeah, that's a true thing. But I do remember working with Adam and your brother. Yeah. On the Man uh, Show. We did the Man Show. Now, the theme to the Man Show, Jimmy and I sat around and did that. But then they probably composed. Yeah, it was like it. it was like 
Bye bye Blackbird. Right. You know, we were just sat in an office and it's like, uh, 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 dry, let's see, I don't quit your, drop your pants. And I was like, <laughs> Take the wife and kids to France. It's the man. That's great. It's bye bye, Birdie. I remember where we were just sort of sitting around. But did Adam and Stephen help with the lyrics? Because they're also really funny guys. They are. I think we. I remember very specifically sitting at my desk across from Jimmy's desk, and we were going sort of bye bye, Birdie or Blackbird. Mm -hmm. Bye bye, Birdie. And. uh, grab a beer and drop your pants. Send the wife and kids to France. <laughs> uh, so yank your favorite pie. Yeah, that Can was. Can we awesome. pull that's it up? Of, Don't we have the theme that's song? That's not good enough for your brother. No, <laughs> they were better than but, that. Butchering it. But drop I pants. did. I did do retro rock and rock with them. So I had this bit that I'd been pitching. I don't know why I had to pitch. It was fucking half my show, yeah. too. Jesus. But Jimmy knows going, not man show. That's not, not a man show bit. You know, he said, like, man show bits. And I grew up watching all those commercials for KTEL where they talked about, you know, this genre of music and that genre of music. And I always joked that all these songs by Leonard Skinner and the Outlaws and 38 Special is all about, like, whiskey <laughs> and gypsy women <laughs> and all that kind of yeah. stuff. And I wanted to pitch a thing called retro rock and rock which is a bunch of that kind of music but it would go insane right. obviously i think by the time we got to season four jimmy was just like i'll fucking do it like who oh, cares you know God. and then i got hold of probably your probably your brother mm-hmm. and adam and mm-hmm. said um i mean i didn't know them but we got hold of them mm-hmm. and said like here's the concept and I'll write some of the I'll write the titles to the song mm-hmm. and some of the lyrics and then you do the music yep. and do well I'll play it for it. Attribute your brother's past, yeah. right? No, no, this that one's alive. alive. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's Steven. Is he a cigar smoker? Did, no, but they just <laughs> All right, did. So he'll be around. They did uh, <laughs> Crazy Ex Girlfriend, you know. Oh, they, right. Into music and comedy. We'll we'll play Chappelle it to you. Show, SNL, if it sounds like them or not. Yeah, oh, and Adam did the uh, music. That's yeah. why it sounds pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's, uh, yeah, and then they won a Grammy for Colbert Christmas. They did Chappelle show. They're very good. But enough about them. Let's get back to Larry. Yeah. 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 So, so then my son says to me, Dad, you should be on that show. And I was like, oh. Larry David. Yeah, Larry David show. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, oh my God, that'd be amazing. But it's, it's never going to happen. It's, it's, it's his friends. It's other like comedy legends. You know, who was on it? Mel Brooks and then Albert. <laughs> it's just crazy. So then I wake up one day, and I'm going to do the short version. We're running low on time. Uh, uh, do, we, do we have time for this? We got a lot of time. We got a lot of time for this. Uh, and and, and uh, I wake up on my birthday one day, and I turn to my wife, and I say, I'm going to say hi to Larry David for my birthday. And she goes, what are you talking about? I go, I'm just going to go to his office. Mm. Yeah, I'm just going to get in my car. I know where his office is. Because they, they've, he made the mistake of showing the big number three, which is outside of a famous like building on Bundy. <clears throat> There's number mm-hmm. one, two, three. I go, I know those buildings. It's mm-hmm. down the street from me, Bundy. So I'm going to go to his office. And my wife said, you're crazy. You're going to get arrested, <laughs> trespassing. I go, no, 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 no. I'm just going to go in. I'm going to say hi, Larry. Anyway, so I just drive there. And it's a very long story that we'll do an, on another podcast. It's too long of a story. But I get in. I make him laugh. And we have like a great time for 20 minutes. The whole time I'm begging him to, I'm like, you got to watch my special because you're in my top five and I want you to be a fan of mine and I'd love to do your show. To, he's like, oh, I'm not watching a special. I don't do it. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty because good. I would, yeah. I would never. Anyway, so, um, and then. Can I say to, this, by the way? What? I'm jealous of him. Why? Because we all do the thing where we go, oh, the special. Oh, that sounds awesome. Oh, for sure, and for sure. And he can just he tell just, you. I'm not going to do that. I'm not yeah. going to do it. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to do it. And it's okay. How, him and Howard Stern. Howard's like, I go, Howard Stern. Howard, yeah. I'm doing a documentary yeah. on the li- on Mad uh, Magazine. Yeah. Not doing uh, it. <laughs> let me tell you something. I wouldn't watch this documentary. No, I want you what? to be in it. I want oh, you to, to be, be in, in it. Howard. Oh, yeah. I, I'm not even going to watch it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you love Mad Magazine. I give you an hour and a half of my life. Bro. Well, what a liberating it way. It is liberating like, like to be go, that way. Have you tried this place? They yes. make the best tapas. Never going there. Yeah. Never. Yeah. And you just move on. Just tell you the truth. Tell Instead, like we'd go down to the fucking Primrose right. path. Oh, check it out. And yeah. then you run at a person six months later. You try the tapas. Yeah. I was meaning to. Yeah. Uh, 
I rolled my ankle. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's the lie are, just keeps going. Yeah, the story keeps going. They just go, they fuck you. Care. No, and they don't just care. don't um, care. I have f me money. Yes. I'm older than sixty. I don't even Suck think it's dick. money. I think before the money, yeah. they had that unfiltered just attitude is what got them their money. But uh, yes. Yeah, so, oh, th- by the way, and then I left that. Yeah, first, let me warm my chops up. Yeah, I left that first. Let's meet. just practice real quick. What with what? It'll be. Let's pretend it's after the show. Okay. And you, you play Elon. Okay. And you say, hey, Adam, I had a great time on your podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you swing by and come by and have a cigar with me yeah, yeah. One, one day? All so, right? so this is you saying this I'm, to me? I'm me. Okay, go you, ahead. you. Am I supposed to be unfiltered or are you the unfiltered I'm guy? unfiltered. Okay, You're got inviting it. me. Okay, I'm inviting you. Yeah. You know, I got to tell you, Adam, mm. I came on your show. I thought it was pretty good, funny. by the way. You know, I opened Very with funny. like a Leno thing. I did a little trub. I did a lot of... Funny. And I think that uh, it'd be nice if we hung out and just Fuck like... Fuck right off. <laughs> No, if we had like a cigar. Fuck off. It's never going to happen. <laughs> no, like I'll get you no a cigar. No fucking way. I love cigars. How about with It's not going to happen. With me. Or with anyone who looks like you. We're Jews. done. You mean Jews. <laughs> <laughs> not a fan of the Jews. Doesn't like the Jews very much. All right. So you go into okay, Larry's so office. Go, you slam. And, and by the way, at the end of that first meeting of slamming, he said to me, you know, you got a lot of like uh, nerve or temerity, whatever word he used. I don't remember. Chutzpah. Chutzpah. Come on. Yeah, but he didn't Chill. say that. Wow. And he goes, he goes, um, I said, oh, you mean just busting into your office? And mm-hmm. he goes, no, no, that, that's not. He goes, I would never go into someone else's office and force them to watch my special. Right. Like that's what that that was his takeaway because I just kept saying I want you to be a fan of mine. It was like a mm-hmm. weird thing. But anyway, that's a whole long story. I went back next year on my birthday. They were in New York. I went back. <laughs> oh, literally, I was thing. just crestfallen. I went back a third year. They were there. They, you know, I'm laughing because I'm picturing his secretary going. Yeah, uh, he's back. It's a, no, <laughs> yeah. no. What? His secretary, like for the next four years, like Uh-oh. it's Alan Gold's birthday, <laughs> and he's like. Do you want to get him something? No, I want to get the fuck out of the office. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm get not the, getting him something. Yeah, put his picture in the front gate. That's right. But then third third year, they're there, and I come in. He walks in, and I go, in my defense, you were very welcoming when I did this the first time. And he, you know, uh, whatever. Anyway, cut to, I do, he gives me a role in season 10 in the last episode. I was a waiting room guy, and my job was just to say, you know, what are you doing here in the doctor's office? Mm-hmm. And he would go on this whole thing about you don't ask that in the, right. the doctor. And by the way, I thought about it. And right before I did it, I said, I should say, instead of what are you doing here in the waiting room, I should say, what are you in for? Mm-hmm. And, th- and then he went on a whole prison riff. Like, right. what do you think is prison? You could ask. Right. Me. So that was a great bit. He calls me like seven months later. I am dying to see myself on curb finally after all these years of going and trying and my son. And, the, and then he goes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm like, no, 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 don't, don't, don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> and he, I'm like, oh, it was cut. Oh. And then he, he said to me, I promise. I, I said, I'm in physical pain right now. I, I can't even move. I, it was the worst news I've ever gotten. And he said, I promise I'll find something for you in next season. I'm like, how likely is another season? He goes, uh, likely. Is this is this season before 10. your brother died or Shut after up. your brother died? Because so you now, said this is the worst news you've ever gotten. No, no, this, and I, I, I <laughs> this would was, think that would be disrespectful. This is so much worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> this was me on Curb. I have, what if Billy's I have listening? two brothers. Yeah, two There's brothers, only yeah. one Curb. I have okay, two brothers. We could lose one of them. So this was the worst news ever. So then, so then I... Uh, anyway, so he, he calls me back in for season 11 and I did two episodes and then like killed it, whatever, and then... Asked me back for a third. So, but here's the fun part of the story. So now we're kind of buddies. Like in Cabo, he's in Cabo, uh, like around Christmas time, and he'll just call me and be like, I'm with a bunch of friends. Could you do your Howard for us? And he'll put <laughs> wow. me on speaker, and I'll be wow. like, oh, let me tell you, this Larry David Robin. And just do this whole thing, and just entertain him. So it's weird. So a month ago, I was his uh, funeral date at, um, at Bud Friedman's funeral. Oh, really? Yeah, so we mm-hmm. all went, by the way, Maybe nine comedians showed up to Bud wow. Friedman, the owner of the Improv's funeral. The whole time, I was just shocked that there was no showing of love and support from all the comedians that he helped, which were thousands. Countless. Yeah. I even said to Larry, are we the only comedian series? Like, yeah. I'm like, very schwach showing of comedians. Right. Schwach is Yiddish for like shitty. Mm-hmm. You know? So anyway, by the way, just Larry as your funeral date, mm. the greatest because he doesn't shut up. Mm. so imagine there's all these eulogies and he just like bud was in the military for a while so this military guy got up and started folding a flag an american flag and he just turns he goes you know the the military are excellent folders (laughs) 
And I'm like, oh yeah, the military and the Chinese, the best. Oh, nobody yeah. folds like the military. Yeah. Nobody folds like. And then he doesn't stop because he has <laughs> oh, a, a he has a compulsion to <laughs> speak and to do bits. So then he goes, you know, you can't, you have to fold a shirt on a table. <laughs> and I'm like, it's, and I'm Garland in this. So I'm just his like, <laughs> yeah. but I'm going, oh yeah, you can't fold it in the air. No, you can't fold it in the air. Right. And he takes his hands and he puts them up. Now someone's speaking and there's a right. funeral, but he's like, in the air, how do you fold it? You can't fold it in the air. You can't fold it in the air. And everyone's going, shh, shh, what is this? And it's like the craziest thing that wherever he is, it is an episode. Everyone asks you, what's he like? What You know what he's like. You, right. He's like that. In fact, the first time I met him, Oh, by the way, my favorite part of the funeral, and this is part where he was finally quiet for a minute, and then he just turns to me and he goes, you got any new impressions? I'm, wow. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like wow. you, you want me to whisper an impression to you right now? I'm going to whisper an impression. This um, is Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. <laughs> hiding in a closet. <laughs> Can't get out of the closet. With terrorists in the house. <laughs> Al-Qaeda there. He's making a phone call from inside the closet. Hello, anybody? But Al-Qaeda's in the house. <laughs> He's got to whisper. Anyway, but you have to whisper. So it's like this. Um, okay, here's the point. Oh, here's here's an insight into LD's brain. Okay, so one Larry of the, David. Yeah, one of the first times I ever met him, uh, I got invited to a debate with Alan Dershowitz and Dennis Prager. Wow. Yeah, and then I walk into the debate, and there's Larry David, and I like only met him a couple of times, just like quickly and peripherally, or like on the Seinfeld set or whatever. But I never, I never spoke to him. So I go over to him. And I'm like, what are you doing here? And he said, well, I'm best friends with one of them and I loathe the other. And I went, oh, so you're a friend of Alan's. I just knew that he yeah. was very left. And, and hates and, Prager. Yeah. 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 Turns out now he hates Alan for supporting oh, Trump. And uh, sure. that's a whole thing where their yeah. friendship dissolved. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so so we were talking and, and uh, it's like amazing. Again, anytime you're talking to him, you're in. That's why when I was finally on the set filming, I'm like, I have done this before. And whether their camera's rolling or not, you're still sparring with McEnroe. You're still, mm-hmm. you, you hit the ball to him. He hits it harder back. So then you have to hit it hard back. And it's still just, you're, you're always just in your on and in your best, you know, uh, uh, comedy. You've got your comedy brain on and it doesn't even matter if they, that's why I was totally relaxed doing the show. But anyway, so we go, we go, he sits like um, in a different section than me. And then at the end, we both go into this VIP reception. And I said to him, Larry, what did you think of the debate? He goes, oh, I was bothered the whole time. I'm like, what, what was bothering you? He goes, I saw Alan's wife and I asked the guy in front of me, I tapped him. And I said, would you mind tapping the woman in front of you? And he goes, no. Oh, I and feel I go, like that's been in. So it was in this season. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, again, you just take on the Garland role and you go, he wouldn't forward the tap. No, no, he wouldn't forward the tap. <laughs> I did not forward the tap. You tap the person, but you tap forward the tap. <laughs> now that was maybe seven, eight years ago. Now the, the genius of Larry is everything that happens to him, he writes down. He brings a pad with him everywhere. He wrote that down. And the other genius is that it's a puzzle to him. So he takes all these hundreds of bits and just puts it together what bit goes with what scene and what part of the show. And I'm like, how did he never do the forward the tap bit and cut to this season, the season I was on? He finally did it with uh, with Tracy and mm-hmm. Richard Lewis. Yeah. And he wouldn't forward the tap. So it's like fascinating to to live a curb moment and then see it, you know, to its fruition on, yeah. on the TV. It was so exciting. Anyway, there's more about Larry, but uh, we don't have time for this. No, but that's good. Yeah. It's enough. It's enough, right? But it's funny. Isn't it, and It's though? interesting. What do you think of Larry? Uh, I'm a big fan of yeah. his, but I love the shit out of Dennis Prager, so that could be problematic. With yeah, the, I love Dennis, him, too, him and well. I've smoked cigars with he Dennis. He loves a cigar. And I understand that. By the way, Larry is a very level-headed... He's one, I, Look, I always call myself moderate. Politically, and people say, "Oh, moderates are just closeted conservatives that don't want to say they're conservative in Hollywood." But the truth is, I I always had, you know, I was always liberal minded as far as them and the gay brother and the, you know, I'm I'm liberal at heart. But when I see things that the left does, like when the left left Israel, for example, not to get too Jewy here, no. but Israel, which is a bastion of liberalism, and it's the only free and open, pluralistic, multicultural, democratic, you know, uh, country in the Middle East. And when the left goes, no, 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 we don't like them, I go, wait, 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 that is the, the biggest, most hypocritical, how could you liberals not like, then I started questioning 
people on the left. And I started questioning, what are their motives? What is their agenda? What, what, what do they want? And then I started going more to the center. And, the, and then whenever I would go too much to the right, I'd be like, oh, well, there's nonsense over there too. Let me go back to the center. But I truly am center politics. And when you talk to a guy like Larry David, Yes, he's liberal. Yes, he's on the left. He's also what I call common sense politics. Yeah. He hates the woke bullshit. He hates all the political correct stuff. And he's, you know, more like minded like you and Dennis Prager than he will even admit to be or, you know, whatever. Yeah, I agree. And Israel's always been confounding Isn't to it? me. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. Mm-hmm. I, I will tell you that. It worked. Whatever the brainwashing that takes place with the divest Israel yeah. Yeah. and the, their oppressors the yeah. and all this it kind of worked. whatever fucking CNN does in college campuses, it, it works. Right. Like uh, you talk to a 35 year old chick they and she's it. like, I'm not into fucking Israel. Why? Because they keep, they're bombing Palestine. They no. bomb the schools. You right. know, it's like, no, oh, you buy all of the bullshit, yeah. <laughs> don't you? And it's like, yes, I do. It's, it's not bullshit. Yeah. And they're, they're like, I, they send knock bombs. When Israel yeah. fires back, they fucking call the building and yeah. they tell them clear out Yeah. because we're giving you a 10 minute heads up. It's before called we knock take the on build, the roof. Knock on Is the roof. Is there any bomb. other and army the, that goes, hello? And the dingbats I talk to go, that's not true. Right. That's not true. Right. And like, where are you getting your non-information? Right. And by the from way, from fucking CNN and AOC yeah. and the fucking squad it's like and the college a, it's campuses. It's nice to see a Gentile all riled I'm up about fucking, Israel. I, I don't this have a so Jewish nice. bone in my yeah, body yeah, except for your, bo- your brother that one time. <laughs> but I've been drinking pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, he had one Jewish. There's bone one in his body. fucking same yes. place in that entire yes. region. It's yes. called Israel. Right. Get the fuck over it, everybody. Right. They're right. surrounded by bloodthirsty Thank savages. You. Yes. Why are you taking? Their side. It's crazy. And by the it's way, it's insane. The, and by the way, the knock on the roof, the bombing that they're doing is only in self defense. It's yes. only because missiles are raining and rockets are raining. It's a on simple them. equation. If everyone was around there, who th- if they all thought like Israel, then ev- everything would be fine. Right. And if you've got rid of Israel, right. it'd be complete chaos right. and bloodshed all day, every day. The, I, and the the, best... I don't mind Palestinians. I don't not. mind Israelis. Right. I don't mind anybody. I mind doofuses, doofuses in this who country take the wrong side. who take the wrong side. They take side. the side of Hamas. Forget Based Palestinians. Based on fucking Israeli. insane Hamas. information they're getting from right. crazy chicks in right. Minnesota. Right. It what, is. Why did that, what happened to everyone's mind? It's infuriates me. It's I was insane. in Israel two days ago. And you're Jewish, so you can't say as much no, about why. it as me. And that's why I don't like I to, to go, defend I don't Israel. have a fucking dog in right. this fight. Exactly. I'm telling you, this is a... Is the Middle East not yeah. proven itself to yeah. be a bunch of bloodthirsty savages? Yeah. And then there's the fucking Israel. Yeah. What? Why and, are you and, taking and, the other side? Correct. And I, I was there, you Ugh. know, the whole apartheid the lie. the people. The apartheid lie. I was oh there on New Year's Eve in the ER. Ask me why in a minute. And it was nothing but... Muslim Arab nurses, Muslim Arab doctors, Israeli Jewish doctors, just coexisting, just working together in a, in a hospital in Tel Aviv. That's the real Israel. And then the lies is it's an apartheid state. Really, an apart- that's an, an insult to actual yes. South African apartheid, uh, which is have, a horror show. I, look, was a horror look, show. Everyone fucking... I have no idea what goes on on college campuses. I don't know why they right. need to indoctrinate why? these soft brain the idiots that enter your establishment with this lie. Right. But they do, and it fucking works. It works. And it's insane. They buy the lie. They want to be angry at something. And it's like, that's the last place to be angry. Well, be angry at Saudi Arabia and how they treat their no, women and kill their... their. No. Be angry at Iran. Look what Iran is doing right now. They're angry it's at It's a Israel. simple equation. If if somebody is doing better, then right. they must be doing it off the backs of right. the people that aren't doing better. Right. So somehow, Well, I always say Israel isn't in the oppression business. There's no money in it. Right. Anyway. <laughs> All right. It's Let, a crazy thing. Let's move let's on, Let's move though. on. Let's, Don't you want to know why I was in the ideal. hospital on Tel yes. Aviv on New Year's Eve. We'll take a quick break right, and then we'll find oh, it's out. it's a cliffhanger. Right after right. this. In celebration of Jim Carolla's upcoming 92nd birthday, here's a list of 92 things Jim Carolla has never done. Number one, thrown a dart. Just one of 92 things Jim Carolla has never done. Let's get back to the Adam Carolla show. Yeah, every time I think about my dad, I was like, 92 years old, never been to Hawaii. Wow. Never put cleats on. Never played a round of golf. Hmm. 
never ridden a mechanical bull. Never, uh, never pulled a train. What are you trying to yeah. say? That you have a you you don't want to copy that those mistakes. You want to do everything. Bucket list part two. I would like to have more experiences right. than my dad before you go. Who's never? You can like break it down this way. He's never owned a sporting good. Wow. <laughs> Forget about crossbows. <laughs> wow. Singular He's never, good. <laughs> he never had a Nerf football. A mitt. A never a mitt. And never a pair of dedicated shoes, like cleats or mm. golf shoes or right. cycling shoes. Mm. Any 14-year-old who's been in Soul Cycle has now eclipsed yeah. my dad's shoe yeah, yeah. record. Now, Even I had like a floor hockey helmet. That's right. You that's, know what I mean? what, that's what I'm saying. No no helmet Nothing. of any kind, no apparatus, Did he no have mitt, no gloves. regrets, glove. though? No. <laughs> or yeah. unclear. Yeah. That's like you. It seems like you seem like one of those guys that have no regrets about anything. I, I don't know. I'm not a regret. I'm not yeah. a regret dude. Yeah. I don't know why that is. Yeah. It just is what it is. It is what of. it is. It's how you are. Anyway. So you end up at a hospital in Tel Aviv. Oh, yeah. So I'm in Tel Aviv. I do a show uh, in Jerusalem, uh, sold out, uh, standing ovation. Not important. But the, uh, <laughs> and then I come off stage and I'm all like, you know how you get off stage and you're all excited. Mm -hmm. And I go to Tel Aviv to meet up with my family and friends. Uh, it was my best friend's daughter's wedding. So this was a part of a New Year's Eve party. So I did the show and I said, yeah, I got to do my thing and then I'll come meet you guys at the party. And my whole family's there and I have teenagers. So one of my teenagers is a young, uh, beautiful daughter. Uh, she's 18. She's going to kill me for telling this. And someone at the party just said, so she's in Israel for the year, by the way. Mm -hmm. And she's at this thing where it's in the morning, they take lessons. In the afternoon, they help orphan kids. And it's a really nice program. It's like a gap year between high school and college. So she's, you know, having her time now to grow and be an adult in the legal uh, drinking age is 18. So they're all like partying in Tel Aviv all the time. And, uh, but she's not a partier. That's why I'm telling you the, the preface is too long. But she's not a drinker or a partier. But someone at this New Year's Eve party goes, hey, tequila shots on me. And she just went nuts, her and her boyfriend, and started shot after shot after shot. Cut to she is not responsive. Oh. I mean, slapping her in the mm. face, going, Audrey, wake up, wake up. And I'm freaking out. I have this lifeless daughter sure. in my hand. Yeah. My wife's going nuts. And we're just for this is New Year's Eve in Tel Aviv, and uh, and then we're and then some a nurse said she doesn't look good, she's white lips, white take her to the ER, and um, the Hatzalah, the ambulance, whatever, and 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 we went to the. But then again, the, the, the whole point of of this crazy story is that you're in in an Israeli hospital, and there's nothing but Arabs and Druze and Jews and this. But the the kids in the college at Berkeley are all pissed off about this. So. <laughs> Should I, we get Adam going uh, they, again? Adam, come on. Do another divest, three minutes. They want to divest. I, that, well, look, they're the biggest Bullshit. hypocrite Hypocrite. bullshitters it's are, the in, hypocrite. in the world. So that's why I left the left. I can't deal with hypocrisy. I can't. They're, they're insane. They have, yep. they have no thoughts on China. They have no thoughts right. on North Korea. Right. It's, they have it's no... like the UN. The UN Human Rights <clears throat> Council is China, Iran, North Korea. It's like, really? They have no thoughts about yeah. Evil yeah, right. empires, right? And all the thoughts in the world about a bastion of sanity and right. an ashtray of insanity. I'm with you. All right. Why aren't we friends? Why don't oh, we smoke yeah. cigars together? I'm, I fuck off! I'll never do that. With you. <laughs> <laughs> and why haven't you watched my special yet? <laughs> I, I watch. I watched. Right. The entire season. Like I, I saw, I saw you knock it out of the ballpark Thank as you. the head of Hulu. That's nice. On Curb Your Enthusiasm. So I was, I, and I should have watched a special. It's okay, but you will. It's thirty-two minutes. It's I'm going to watch many it. things. I Shot know. at the cellar. We did. I did five. We. You know who does that all the time? Jay Leno always. You know we did the show, and I'm like, you, it, was, it was just you. You were doing stand up. Right. You know we did when when we did the. You know we were working on the cars. You mean you were alone in your garage working on your car? Well, I was sitting there. We're working on the cars. You know I was riding. And you know we, we were riding the unicycle on <laughs> you know we were playing solitaire you know we were masturbating the other day we were masturbating and it was such a good uh anyway so so we were what was i saying you were we were doing something doing a show at the oh cellar. Yeah, yeah doing a show at the cellar i was doing it and i did five sets in one night with a camera crew of like three people and mm -hmm. then uh edited it all together called it sets in the city <laughs> you understand yeah. mm -hmm. and and but it really i'm really proud of it because it's very relevant and timely and as much as you know it it's such a uh it's not a dichotomy but it, it keeps going back and forth between fighting the woke i do this whole thing about 
being called sir and ma'am and transgender stuff. And then also on the li- the liberal side of me, it, the whole message of the special is one of tolerance and love and let's make fun of everyone, but with love and and have tolerance for everyone because tolerance, you know, don't hate tolerate. Like I'm not asking you to love anyone. People don't love their own family. Your mother died. You didn't even go. To the, you didn't have a funeral for her. People don't love their own but family. I had deep, deep affection. Right. For okay. Her. Fine. But you people don't <laughs> love or speak to members of their own family. I'm not expecting you to love the Jews. I'm not expecting you to love any group. But they have don't. tolerance and. Uh, you know, so there's this really nice message to the special. That's why I'm proud of it. It's a combination of great bits and a, and a message that's you know anti hate. We could use that. In this. I I don't know why I'm going to dip back for a second, but yeah. New Year's Eve in Tel Aviv is a Robert Goulet song. You know, it's like swinging. He's got yeah. the band New Year's yeah. Eve in yeah. Tel Aviv. We drank too much tequila, <laughs> but we had a new like. There's something there. There's right. a New Year's Eve in Tel Aviv. There is something, and maybe you get a little Yiddish in there somewhere. <laughs> like we do. Yiddish in uh, Israel, we, you idiot. Oh, it's yeah. Hebrew. <laughs> Hebrew. We do, and I still defend the people, even though Thank they refuse you. to speak Yiddish. I'm saying yeah. that could be your Hanukkah. That's it. That could be your Hanukkah song. There it is. Move I'm over, Sandler. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have Stephen and Adam, even though he died also, um, <laughs> to the music to it. All right, Chris, you have some uh, trending topics. Oh, this is Stuff good. in the news uh, Wait, can I, can I set it up with this? Yeah. Uh, what else is in the news, Robin? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Howard. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we were talk- you were talking about the Middle East and just how crazy it is over there. It's also very crazy in Mexico right now. Mm-hmm. So um, the son of El Chapo... His name's Ovidio Guzman, nicknamed the Mouse. He oh. was just arrested, and it was an ordeal. It is an ordeal. So he's a high-ranking member of the Sinaloa cartel, and there are so they they go they go to where he's hiding out. It, it was just like a huge military team. They they extract him. They get him in a car, and they get they they're now they're they're getting trying to get him onto a plane. And here, there are videos of the cartel just jumping into their cars, racing, chasing after the military. They're for, they've, if you watch on the right side of this this uh, screen right here, you can see that the cars just. This is the this is the cartel just speeding to try to catch up to the mm. military to stop the Mexican military from mm. from um, from his capture. Wow! They're, they're setting up blockades on all the uh, all the streets. Mm. It, 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 it's a war now. Guns are being fired. They're trying to get uh, get him onto a plane. They're shooting at the plane that they're trying to get him onto. And they're so here. Here's a here's a drone shot of just the warfare wow. that's going on. Um, they're even the the cartel are taking selfie videos of their blockades. Like they're getting on the internet and on Twitter. Like yeah, we're gonna we're gonna stop this this military from from capturing our boy. Yeah, it's it's, it, it's chaos. And the plane that. Um, that they're trying to get them on, they're shooting at it already, and they hit another plane from Aero Mexico, which is oh, like no. which is like Delta or something. So, mm-hmm. so everybody on which was full of people, by the way. So you, yeah. there, there's a video of of all these people just crouched, just as, as their uh, the fuselage of this this plane got hit and is now grounded. It, it's nuts. Yeah, they're a narco state, and uh, like you know, here's my take on border security and walls and things of that nature. Uh, we have two borders. Uh, one's with Canada and the other's with Mexico. I only need one wall. <laughs> and I don't want to get too political, so I'm not going to say which country. Right. But what I'm saying is... is Not if political. You... That that sounds racist. Like yeah. you're against Mexicans and Mexican people when you're just against if the Canada government. If Canada was doing what and... Mexico right. is doing... You'd be against it, but they're white. Be, so you sorry, can... Howie Mandel. Right, you're not right. welcome right. here. I mean, if there are... Drug, they're essentially a narco state, which is completely lost control. The government, you know, if you're in the government, you take the silver, you take the lead. You either get money or you get shot. Mm-hmm. And most people take the money because, you know, they have families and whatnot. That particular country, whatever the stretch is, whatever that border is, uh, secure the fuck out of it mm-hmm. and then let in whoever you'd like to let in. Right. I'm just saying, secure it. Like, what I'm not saying, here's what I'm saying. Secure it. I'm saying Guns N' Roses is playing at the forum. I'm not saying nobody gets to see Guns N' Roses. I'm saying have a dude in a windbreaker stand by the door. <laughs> and if you have a ticket and an ID yeah. and we're able to check your purse and make sure That's there's not a pistol in a it, great then analogy. you fucking get to go inside and watch Guns N' Roses. Yeah. But if you're swinging a machete 
and yeah. you got a bunch of uh, bootleg uh, Sudafed, yeah. then you're going to have to stay outside. That's, That's all. such a great analogy. It's a ticket to a rock concert, and you need the ticket. You need the ticket. You can't all just go in. You can't right. just walk in. So, yeah. and but I, I love Guns N' Roses. I, That's not going to do I, it. I, I get it. <laughs> it's not going to do it. Yeah. You love an axle. It's not going to be enough yeah. for me to let you in. Crazy. Yeah. So, yes. so this, this guy... Um, and also, top- as I've said many times, I know everyone gets their panties in a bunch about a wall or fence or whatever we're calling. If somebody said to me, you know, Canada's building a wall... So we don't wander into their country. I'd go, well, I guess that's their business. Right. Knock yourself out, right. Canada. I'll go through the crossing zones. Yeah. That's it. It's not but if the U.S. Me. does it. Oh, it's a hate crime. It is. So yeah. might as well just build that upper wall, too, just, just to make it even. But the. Um, By the way, are you uh, are you an out Republican? Is, is that... I am now. I didn't oh. use I, I didn't used to care one way or the other. And how does that thinking. affect your relationship with Kimmel? I mean, my... he loves me. Obviously, but the political relationship, that divide that you guys have, I mean, that's right and left. I have that with a lot of people, most people. Right. No one agrees with most of what I say. <laughs> wow. But I mean, during so... COVID, it was fucking a bloodbath. Right. So I'd say everything Do I want to say. Do you feel vindicated now? Totally. That's amazing. And I want all these people to suck my chub. But you had to wait <laughs> two years to be right. Imagine like in an well, argument with your mind, wife. Not you my have mind. Not my mind. Who left Remember? the garage door right. open? I'll tell you in 2026. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait. That's the worst. Yeah. I. But look, you don't have a rift between you and Jimmy? No. We love each other. But how do politics not get mixed into the relationship? I don't know. And it's not, it's, it never was a part of our relationship. Which is so weird because it would, you would think that his politics are aligned exactly with yours. Just based on his comedy and like what he talks about. And, but then when you see him go on the uh, sort of rants about whatever it is, anti-Trump, anti-this, and I'm the furthest from a Trump guy. But he's so anti-right wing. And, I, and like part of me thinks... You know, well, this is a guy from the Man Show, it, and this is Corolla's bestie. If you want to know, like, like sort of Democrat so... Republican where I am, I live in California. I've seen what a Democrat supermajority can do to a state. If you said to me, "Would you rather have Ron DeSantis run California?" I would say, "Fuck in a yeah!" Second. And then yeah. people would go, "Oh, so that makes you a Republican?" Right. And I'd go, "I would no. just rather have the smart guy do it yeah. than the fucking bought and paid for yeah. idiot do it." Yeah. That's all. If that makes me a Republican, then so be it. But if yeah. Ron DeSantis was a Democrat, yeah. I'd rather him run the state How as about a Democrat. The guy who got the pandemic right. Let's yes. Have that well, let's guy. have the guy who got the pandemic right yeah. come over here and help yep. help this uh, state out. Yep. That's uh, that's the way I look at it. But everyone's got to be. But it doesn't be... get in a, in the way of your relationship. No, that's we're fascinated. Best, best of friends. I love that. Yeah. Well, it could it could it could be that way. I've lost for everyone. I've lost crazy lefty friends being a moderate. Yeah. Again, no, <laughs> there's no just like you're there's too no, center. There's for no us. wiggle room. With <laughs> no that. wiggle room. It's too like in the you, middle. If you're if you believe in Israel, oh, yeah. if you don't believe in lockdowns, mm. if you want school choice, nuts. Uh, if you like border security, then you're an insane MAGA Republican, yeah. and you are not coming you, to the you party. Know who you would love Barry Weiss. Yeah, I love Barry Weiss. Yeah, because that's again common sense politics. She's a liberal. She's a lesbian. She's this. She's that. But common sense politics. Yes. How is the entire country not in the common sense po- political game? I don't get How do we get everyone on every college campus to hate Israel? Yeah. That's it worked. And by the way, that's not the only issue with college campuses. It's also like, uh, you know, everything from free speech, you know, which is supposed to be, again, a liberal value, but then they censor anyone (laughs) that doesn't agree with them. Yeah, I know. I mean, there's so many issues with how uh, college campuses have just, they're poisoning, not college campuses, the, the colleges, the universities, the faculty. They're literally poisoning these young minds and giving them their agenda. And, you know, now they're going out and into the world, hating things like Israel, which nobody should hate, and just having this sort of warped view of everything that is not reality, that is anti-common sense. And, yeah, I stopped performing at colleges. I don't even want to deal with Imagine doing my little uh, vinegar bit at the, in a college. No. <laughs> yeah, can't forget about it. Are you worried about where your daughter is going to go to college after the gap year? Uh, no, no, Are you no. Be involved? Yeah, I'm going to be involved, and she already has a choice in New York. But it, it's 
there's no way that my kids would ever go to a liberal liberal arts college. Like my son is in Indiana University now, and they're just very cool and and down the and down the middle. Uh, and uh, no, I could they could never go to a Berkeley or a or a Brown University or any of those. They're also not smart enough. My <laughs> my son's not going to college. I'm not worried about it. His gap year is going to be working at the Gap for seven years. <laughs> uh, How's your son's gap year? He's going on Gap. He's going on year thirteen. He's switching he's to sale. Old Navy. Yeah. He's at the Gap in Encino, but they're talking about junior management for the oh, one God. in West Covina. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm going to make him work at a gap. <laughs> so I don't have to be year. humiliated. Isn't great. he 31? Yeah, uh, yeah, but he's, he's taking his time, he's keeping his options great. open, folding those jeans. I mean, uh, giving it, kicking some tires. I was at Trader Joe's this morning. Mm -hmm. And not to brag, but that's what I do in the morning. I, <laughs> I dropped my kids off at school. Then I went to Trader Joe's. And I, this, the, the cashier guy, he was so cheerful. You're talking 8.30 in the morning. Well, when you're wearing a Hawaiian shirt, yeah. Hawaii, <laughs> you, know, you have you're to be. immediately in a better mood. And it was so inspiring to me to go, this guy's going to stand a lot of the day. Stand, which is, mm -hmm. you know, look at us. I mean, we're sitting, you know. Slouch, tired yeah, from I, saying, I got to lay down, finish yeah, the show. <laughs> exactly. I always say I'm, you know, I'm so lazy. There, I have two examples of laziness. I won't open up a pistachio if it just has that line. Mm, you know, yeah, it's got to be enough. like, ha you know, half. Uh -huh. And mm. also, for me, the most the most difficult part about doing stand up is the standing. Mm, like, yeah. I can't. Like, do you know why there's a stool on the stage of every? Because just in case we right. need to, all that pacing, that right. arduous back and forth, and all the standing uh -huh. for the 58 minutes that we're right. up there, we need the stool. So, so yeah, I'm like inherently. Lazy, but anyway, what was I saying? I, I popped an edible. You're, sometimes you were at the Trader Joe's. Yeah, about the Trader Joe's, guy and I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, he had this every guy, reason to be in a bad mood. Every reason but he, he has wasn't. to stand for the next seven, eight hours. Yeah, and he was so cheerful, and he it was so inspiring. And then I left there going, me, I have all the freedom in the world. You know what it's like to be a comedian, to be anything, a podcaster. You have so much freedom during your days, at least, you know, and on many nights. And what to do with your time is is just your choice. And all I am is like kvetchy and miserable and like, oh, I got to do this. And I got to, you know, I'm like, Jackie, there's a dozier, he think a place of dozier. So I got to go to the bank and make a deposit. Anyway, but but the point is like, you, I have so lost the laugh factory crowd. Yeah, like sorry. the 23 year old I'm sorry. Latina chick in the front <laughs> of the Joshua's No, fuck it. Get back to Putty I'm Hackett. Sorry. But it was so, it was inspiring to see this guy is happy and he's got to stand by a but cashier. Aren't, and, aren't some people just like breeds of dogs? I don't think – obviously, there are some people that are – yeah, that, that 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 don't have the brain. These guys that work at Trader Joe's – I don't Joe's, mean small brain. Young, I'm not talking about small brain. I just who mean are breed just, a dog. Just, yeah. I got a lab. The fucking dog's happy yeah, well, all the time. Well, when you look at like just, a factory worker mm -hmm. and they're just doing that same thing over and over again, mm -hmm. you like, do, how are – what are their thoughts like? Is there nothing going on in there? Because no one with any sort of brain can I, do that I, every I, day, I can, all day. I can tell you – that when I got out of high school, I didn't take a gap year. I went straight to a construction site and I started doing heavy manual labor, mm -hmm. just ditch digging for, we worked nine or 10 hours a day and would never put the shovel down. And I was going out of my gourd. Really? I, I was going insane. Because you weren't mentally stimulated. I was like, there was no earbuds. There was right. no books on cassette. Right. Somebody had ranchero music playing in a radio in the <laughs> next room, you know, and I, I was going out of my mind mm. and the guys I was working with were just digging, wow. you know what I mean? And, and at time, at the time I thought there was something wrong with mm. me because why am I going insane and everyone else just keeps showing up and doing what they're doing doesn't seem bothered by it. And I was like kind of crawling out of my skin and I was, I was, I was trying to entertain myself. Like I'll count the number of scoops mm -hmm. I do every 10 <laughs> seconds, you know, and I'll count how far I can push this wheelbarrow, how many steps between here and the dumpster and stuff. I was like making up games like I, like I was in prison. Mm -hmm. And uh, then later on when I got into comedy, I was like, oh, that's why I went insane. But these people aren't getting into comedy because they they're you, able to do it you had something to say you wanted to you know get get things off your chest i mean this whole show is you just getting things off your chest yes they don't have it you know it's like it, it, again we're, we're not trying to say there's 
first of all, there are dumb people and there are smart people. There, there's always that. That's why I never understood like people like Bernie Sanders. Everybody has to be. I was just doing Jackie Bates. It's the same <laughs> thing. It's the same voice. Uh, <laughs> to be like uh, the billionaires have ruined everything. He's so against billionaires because he's yeah. the only Jew that never made money. <laughs> but no, he's just so against billionaires. It's a crazy. It, it, it's just crazy to me. But but he always preaches equality. It's always equality, equality, equality. But there will never be equality. Not in wealth. Not in health. We saw COVID. Some people died. Some people were sick. Some people. We we you won't see equality in looks. Some people are gorgeous. Some people are hideous. And you won't see equality in brains. Some people are just dumb, and very very dumb people who like let's say whether it's by choice, not educated or not. Very very dumb people tend to do jobs that a dumb person can do all day without going crazy like you did. Because you're an intellectual, you can't do a dumb person's job. Right, but my life was completely physical my entire life. Right. Football and like wrestling and construction and all that sh- BMX bikes and stuff. Everything was physical for me. So when I was had the never ending, relentless, repetitive, dumb job. Mm-hmm. I was going insane, but I thought, why are you going insane? You're a physical guy. You should be here and not coming up with funny jingles. <laughs> 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 uh, but I didn't know it. So I, right. I, I took a guy with an intellectual brain who was a horrible student and pushed him onto a construction site, and I started to go insane. Right. But the but back to the point about equality, which there never will be. I mean, it's a beautiful notion to strive for. Oh, let's all be equal. But we can't be equal. No. We I, can't I physically, I mentally, emotionally. We cannot be equal. So to even strive for that is just uh, endless and purposeless, and you're, you're, you're just striving for nothing. They don't even... Uh, Okay, but 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 they but, don't even mean it. But I, I uh, that's sometimes the whole thing. like they don't think what they're saying right. is possible. They're right. just talk. When you hear Michelle Obama talking about yeah. being the light and finding your light yeah. and discovering the light and opening toward the light and Some the ball just don't the light, have the she light. just says blah 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 right. light 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 right. inner yeah. truth seat at the table right. as a woman of color blah blah. They don't even know right. what the fuck they're saying. Right. That, that they don't believe any of it. They're fucking selling books. I, I'm sorry to go cynical. I used to think they believed it. Right. I don't think they believe that's it. how. Bad it's gotten. You They're don't even believe like Michelle that Obama's just blah blah right. blah. Just uh, just platitude, platitude, right. platitude. But and what is it like? You think? Let's say a truck driver. Okay, mm-hmm. so he's on the road eight, ten hours, twelve hours, whatever, and he's just staring at the road. Now, maybe now they're listening to podcasts and whatever, mm-hmm. but what does your brain? How do you stimulate your brain? How do you not fall asleep? Forget, think about. Well, I mean, okay, let's just. So use, that's a different brain, is what I'm saying. Let's use the guy at the Trader Joe's and then Larry David. Mm-hmm. Larry David is, is always cycling. Mm-hmm. His brain is going at. 10,000 RPM. Right. And so there's not enough scraps of paper right. for him to write stuff down. Right. These guys' brains are detuned. Right. So look at it as almost an RPM thing. They're not spinning that fast. They're spinning enough to breathe, blink, eat, fuck, yep. smoke, <laughs> right. nod right. their head. It's it's but, Elon Gold versus Elon Musk. I'm a big dum-dum. You know, I'm serious. I'm not a smart guy. But well, Elon Musk, his brain is going no, so I he would stutters. Argue you're, all, spinning, all, you're spinning at a, a higher RPM spinning. than there's, you're giving but, yourself credit okay, for. Okay, fine, but I'm illiterate and I don't read books and I'm stupid. Well, I'm with you there. But if you take <laughs> a high RPM brain and you hand him a shovel right. and tell him, I did a job once at the... Pier 1 in Santa Monica off Wilshire Boulevard or on Wilshire Boulevard, which is still there. And they they dropped me off alone. Now, what if you dropped me off, or if I was working with somebody, I would just talk the person's ear off. Right. They didn't want to hear it. Right. They didn't speak English. They didn't care. But I'd just yeah. be talking the whole the whole time. It's but a compulsion. I, I got dropped off at the Pier 1 <laughs> in Santa Monica on Wilshire, and... I just got dropped there at like 7 a.m. by Mike Stramat, and there was a giant pile of dirt the size of a Winnebago on that side of the uh, parking lot. It was about 150 feet away, and then there was an empty dumpster on this oh. side, and they just hand me a shovel and a wheelbarrow, and they go, don't leave until that is in there. <laughs> you know. And, and I got dropped off, 
and I had no earbuds or Walkman or, or nothing, no phone, you know, no nothing. And I would just start walking and I would start counting, you know, how many shovel, how many scoops mm. went into the wheelbarrow. I could time myself. Make some like mental going, games. Yeah, yeah. To make some mental games like I was uh, Steve McQueen in the cooler. Wow. And, and I was going nuts. But I didn't know I was going nuts. I thought there was something wrong with me because mm. other people could do this. Mm-hmm. But you have that in you. You also have that, the, the intellectual side and the physical side. Like, don't you build shit and put together things? Yes. Like, you're like like construction. Like, you literally can build a house or something? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, I think you built your own. The first time I met you, it was your house in the Hollywood Hills, and you and Kimmel and a couple other guys were playing poker. I went with my manager, Willie Mercer, and you were talking about how, yeah, and I built this house. And I went, what? How do you, how do you even find the materials to build it? They, this was before Home Depot. Where do you even get, let alone put it together? This is before Ikea. Ikea, by the way, should do houses, I think. You, when yeah, you put together I'd your own house. house. Why do they stop at furniture? <laughs> it's so <laughs> close. It'd also be funny, too, it's where it's so like yeah. the guy come back two years later. Like, you haven't built a house. I lost the Allen key, yeah. and I'm fucked. There's one, yes. one instrument missing. Uh, yeah, I know yeah. how to build everything. You but, know how to build. So when you're building, say you're like in the garage or you're building how do you occupy your brain with fun things while you're doing that? Well, building is much different than mm. digging because you have to think about building what is thinking goes about with what digging is the same action over and over. There's no thought. Building is the process of what you're doing now will it's like engineering design will affect the next right. part of this equation. Right. So, building, you know, building is a lot of this. You're putting cabinets in your kitchen. Your cabinets have a four-inch toe kick on, on the bottom of it. And now you're designing your cabinets, and you want a four-inch toe kick. That's a space mm-hmm. your toes go in mm-hmm. when you're standing at the counter. Yeah, it collects all so, the crumbs. Right. So you go, all right, we'll build the cabinet and cut in a four-inch toe kick. Building is kind of the process of going, what kind of flooring are you using? Mm-hmm. Because if you're using linoleum or vinyl or something, you'll set it right on there. You'll have, you'll, you'll have that. But if you're going to put... Uh, cement board and tile up to the toe kick, then th- you're going to shave an inch off it, and your four inch toe kick is going to be a three inch toe kick. So, uh, before you build the cabinets, figure out what you're doing for flooring in there. And everything a lot of thought goes in a this. lot of before you do it because you will be fucked mm-hmm. if you don't do this part of it. You have to think of that part of it now. Otherwise, you'll be screwed. Like when you're ordering door jams, like mm-hmm. half inch drywall on the inside. Is it five inch drywall on the inside? Because it's got to be even with the drywall. What's the outside of the exterior door jam? Is it stucco? Are we doing siding? How thick is the stucco? We need the jam to end perfectly with the stucco and end perfectly flush with the drywall on the inside. Like it's it's a never ending process of how does this affect that? So your brain will constantly be in motion right. trying to figure out how this is going to affect that. Yeah. And isn't the satisfaction greater? I mean, you get a new kitchen versus, oh, there's the pile of dirt in the, in the container. Oh yeah. The, right. Yeah. That, that, yes, there's not, no, no a accolades could do for that. that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's take a quick break. We'll come back and do a few more of sure. these uh, stories right after this. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Hey, this is Nick from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I just had a discussion with my wife, and I won over the fact of purchasing a $130 robe that I only bought because I heard it from you. I will see you in Philly, and my wife may say something about it. Thanks. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Yeah. I, get that Philly? robe. Get it. I'm doing shows at Helium. Tonight. Uh, tonight, as you hear this. Yeah. And then tomorrow night. Oh, great. Um, get a good fucking bathrobe. I don't care if it's 800 bucks. And you go, 800 bucks. You wear it every single day for a decade. Totally worth it. And it's down, the, it's, do the slippers, too. Get it's the, the good ones. It's the greatest thing. People who either save money or don't want to spend. I know there's a whole Jews are cheap thing, but the truth is 
you know, and I talk I was about thinking it. Yeah, I know you're thinking it. Say anything. J- Jews spend. We will spend just as long as we know we're spending less, mm. <laughs> right? Because mm-hmm. for us, it's all about getting a good deal. You got to get a good deal from the day you get circumcised. Once you get that first ten percent off, you're going to want it for the rest <laughs> of your life. But anyway, but the truth is, I'm such a spender. Like I'm a crazy. I'm the opposite of cheap. I spend so much, so I'm broke. I just spend and trips and Italy and this and. And then, but my whole life, I've been a drummer and I've been interested in drums since I was a kid. But I grew up in the Bronx in a little apartment, no way to get a drum set. And my parents or teachers couldn't afford a drum set. Then finally, you know, I'm, a, you know, I get married and we have an apartment, so I can't, still can't get a drum set. We finally get a house, but now we have like kids. So it, to me, it's like frivolous spending to what? Am I going to buy a thousand dollar, two thousand dollar drum set? I got to feed my kids, I got to work, da, da, da. and People think I do really well. I don't do that well. I do okay. Nobody thinks you do well. Okay, fine. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, I finally just said to myself, my life's almost over, and I still haven't bought a drum set, which is like a passion for me. It's like not just well, a you hobby. you can't buy one now. No, why not? Because in the story it'll be, all he wanted was that drum kit. And then he died. And on the way back... <laughs> Yeah. From the guitar from center. From Sam Ash <laughs> for the guitar center. <laughs> he was killed he by that semi truck. Yeah. You no, can't do no, it. No, no. The point was, I walk by or drive by one of these things, like drum sets, you know, mm-hmm. $500. And I go, I just spent $480 last night at dinner and I shit it out. That's right. And I shit it out. At the table. At the table. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this From the is, night before. Yes. <laughs> yes. It was lunch and shit. No, I, I... And I went, this is for life and it's every day and it's something I've wanted for 50 years. Stop waiting. I pulled over. I went, I want it. And I just, I got it and I play almost every day and it's like, don't Until wait. Until the accident, but yeah. No, but the same with the robes. The same I'm, with the robes. I'm, I'm, I'm if you, you wear a robe every day and it enhances your life, you get out of the shower, you got a robe. You know what else? Also, never chintz out on things like mattresses. Half of your life is sleeping, you know, whatever, yeah. a third. So what are you going to, instead of spending, you know, 200, it's, it's a nine dollar mattress, but you are going to sleep better every single day. You I'm with don't, you. Yeah. Anyway, that's 1,000%. So now, what, go with the good slippers, too. Yeah. Ah, that's not necessary. <laughs> You're right. Nobody We're gilding the lily here. here. And, th- right. and yeah, a, a good thong. Uh, all right. Uh, what what else? you got, Chris? All right, uh, what else is in the news, Chris? Well, well Howard. This is very exciting. I know. Well, um, you know, something that's kind of been. You've said it all. You've uh, said, we've, we've said, said it all. all. Yeah. Uh, something that we've, uh, that's been in the news a lot are all the, uh, the drag shows, the drag yeah. queen story hours. Yes. And all. It's, like a, it's, it's a really big topic that kind of just came within the last year that's ca- yeah. now been, it has been everywhere. Well, Crocs, everyone's favorite uh, mm-hmm. shoe slash slipper company, whatever they are, um, they're facing backlash right now because they are co-sponsoring a drag event at a kid's fashion show. Mm. And they so it, it's for RuPaul. She has a drag con event. Okay, okay, okay. another good friend of mine. Th- yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, <laughs> thousand things. Well, you got to type. Yeah. All right. Let me say this. Every time I turn on the TV, you know, I don't know what how it even works anymore, but they always have that advertisement for the TV show you don't want to watch. Always RuPaul's uh, drag right, show. Sure. Uh, and then. I don't know, 75 Emmys in the last 80 years yes. or whatever it is. Yes. It's like, do we Pow. have to worship at the altar of RuPaul? Right. Like, right. can everyone go, that ah, guy's a hack, show's a piece of shit, we're not going to nominate it this year. Like, Ben, how many fucking Emmys has that show been? All right, here's, all right, good. Elon, you're What's perf- the problem, though? I think the problem You're perfect here- for this. All right, all right first go things ahead. first. If I was five... And you drug me to a drag show or drag me to a drag <laughs> show, I'd be scared shitless yeah, of o- over Divine over here, the heavy yeah. set, 50 something yeah. year old dude who's struggling with his sexuality and the big fucking hair and the stripper, stripper lucite wedgies and stuff. I'd be freaked out at mm-hmm. five to see one of these fucking mm-hmm. behemoths, mm-hmm. N- number one. Number two, this thing, I- I'll tell you what it all feels like to me. And, and you guys, Chris, chime in. Sure. Elon as well. Yeah. I'll tell you what all of this shit feels like. Mm-hmm. All the woke shit you talked about. Stanford saying, oh, you can't say this mm-hmm. word. And that guy. It starts off with like, look, we just want a little this. You know what I mean? We're looking for a little equality here. You know, that's all. We just want to gaze. Fine. They, they want to have a, a civil union. They don't have to get married. Just have a civil union they so they can get the insurance right. from their partners. Why not? Whatever. That's and then when the me. guy dies, he's able to leave the money to this thing. Well, then we can do that with a civil union. They don't have to call them husbands and wives. They don't need to be married. They just let them have a civil union. And we think most of us go, yeah, okay. Right. That, that, 
that sounds fine to me. And then at some point, that gets a little old, and they go, look, we just want we just want to be married. We just want to be able to marry. Why can't I marry my partner? You married your partner. Why can't your brother marry Billy Porter? You know, why not? And then guys like us go, yeah, all right, yeah, that's okay. okay. That yeah, sounds reasonable fine. to me. And they go, that's all we want. We just want this thing. And you go, look, okay. And then they go into, uh, you know, it's not okay to say queer or it's not – Gay and straight. It's it's L. We have an L G P T P. Right. And you go. By the way, queer yeah. is back. Just so you know, oh, from yeah. the gays. The gays oh, chose they gave queer, it back. which is the weirdest thing because right. queer sounds like a derogatory and, term. <laughs> and you go, yeah, you're gonna queer the deal. And then they go, it's the L G B T Q R B F D, and right. we need you to start saying that. And then you're like, well, well, okay. And then they go, look, we need. Gay representation in Disney films, you know, stuff like, yeah, blah, blah, okay, sounds fine. All right, we're going to take 50 year old former long haul truckers and put them in a fucking thong back and have a mince around your five year old. And you go, uh, okay, but hold on. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm with you right. on all of this stuff. But now it seems like, oh, what's the problem? You're involving <laughs> children. And well, they're like, oh, yeah. okay, so we can't express yeah. ourselves yeah. In, in front no. of whatever. No, you and, can't. And then, and then now, oh, so you're a hater now. And it's mm. like, is this you wanting to perform in front of kids? Or is this your progressive movement that never stops until somebody goes, what the fuck? And right. then you go, oh, we got a hater here. Right. That's what it is. Right. That's the psychology behind it. Yeah. So Here's pushing. the whole thing about drag queen story hour. Any self-respecting drag queen should be like, I'm not going to fucking shake my caboose for a five-year-old. Right. What kind of chicken shit is this? <laughs> if they did a stand-up story hour, I'd go, what's going on? <laughs> We're going to the bouncy castle at noon on Tuesday. I'd go, I'm not going to no. fucking show up right. there. No, yeah. Why the fuck would I perform for yeah. a seven-year-old? It makes me think of the whole don't say gay thing, which, right. by the way, was never the thing. Never in the bill. It was never it, called don't say gay. Same people who Nickname, think but, Israel's bad right, on college campus right. got duped but, into but, this. But just like, you know, the point was don't teach teach five-year-olds about homosexuals. I would say don't teach five-year-olds about heterosexuals. Yes. Like, don't teach five-year-olds anything but teach ABC how to count. and, yeah. yeah, how to count. When mommies and daddies love each other, they sometimes 69. Right. Are you listening, right. Timmy? Right. So don't teach. No. You know, speaking of my younger Drag brother. Drag race, 27 Emmys. Oh, wow. 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 Uh, how many fucking Emmys does all in the family have? Three and a half? Yeah, that's crazy. Jesus fucking Christ. Cheers. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's nuts. Yeah, it's a, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, oh, you're uptight? You don't yeah. want your kids to go? Yeah. No, I'd like them to be kids. Yeah. And then at some point, they'll learn gay and drag and everything else at some point, or even become a celebrated performer. Yeah. And, and possibly and date your brother. Yeah, and you're but, putting things into into these kids' heads that that they're not ready for. Right, but they don't know how to process. But here's any of the it. game: what is their game? Right. What do they want out of I this? I don't know. They want to fucking agitate. Yeah, is what they want. Yeah. If it was just a gay marriage, good. Get married, yeah. be gay, go over there. Yeah. Who gives a fuck? No, nah, nah, I'm going to get your kids involved now. Oh, you don't like that? So Woo, we got a problem yeah. now. Yeah, you're it's an agi- They're agitators. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're angry w- agitators. They found the threshold. They do the same thing with Israel. Yeah, it's, it's just like, same we're just going to keep going until you get pissed off. And it's illogical. All right. And then once you get pissed off, we'll call you close minded right. and a hater. Right. Yeah. That's the game, everyone. So don't play it because they're not going to stop. It has no end. It has no end. I mean, could you imagine just. A few short years ago, trying to explain drag queen story hour, yeah. I'd be like, "What the fuck are you don't know?" Yeah. <laughs> there was a place I grew up out here. There's a place called the Queen Mary. That's where the shows were. I I don't understand why it's entertaining <laughs> as an art form in general, but I don't understand Yoko Ono. And evidently, she has a following. There's a lot of stuff I don't understand. Yeah, but there was a place called the Queen Mary. That's where they perform. It was done at night with consenting adults and alcohol. End of story. We did not need to bring it to the public library. Or the kindergarten. Yeah. Right. It's fucking nuts. Well, you should... Uh, All the Family, 22 total episodes. Wow. So RuPaul's Drag Race has beat it by five. Wow. And the count is climbing. That's nuts. Because if you don't nominate it, it's a shoe th- that's, a hate, that's a hate crime. Yeah. If that, you nominate it. Now, that is some weird stuff. You didn't know that, Johnny? I, I did not. I did not know that. <laughs> Johnny, you would is not apply. Weird? Yes, sir. And, you know, in my day, we didn't uh, We didn't have a drag race. We had a... Uh, no. <laughs> a drag race that involved a Hemi. <laughs> what, what did it involve? <laughs> a Hemi. That was a drag race. Blown, fueled. 
alcohol, <laughs> nitrous. You know, any drag race that doesn't involve cars is really <laughs> very upsetting to me. You know? I'll still be Ed McMahon. Hell! Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, uh, people are uh, burning their Crocs because of So they're burning Crocs because of it. Yeah. All right, listen, people are insane. Yeah. What are you going to do? And also, could there be anything worse for the environment than lighting? I, you, you could light a pyramid of used car tires on fire, and it wouldn't be as bad right. as burning one pair of size 12 Crocs. <laughs> like you're <laughs> single-handedly <laughs> destroying the universe by burning your Crocs. And these people are probably into the environment, right, who are wearing the Crocs. Oh, the Crocs have made it into, they used to be sort of a certain group. Now it's just all I lazy see him, people. I see them yeah. everywhere. Yeah. You do? Yeah, yeah they're airplanes. It's like the now. first yeah. time, the first time I saw a guy smoking in a Tesla, <laughs> I was like, Elon, you've arrived. Because <laughs> now it's ubiquitous. Yeah. It's not just this group. Yeah. It's everyone driving a Tesla. Yeah. yeah. All right, one more. All right. Oh, well, uh, so they are. Uh, they How many you- Emmys does Cheers have, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get all. I want all the. No- a Seinfeld. Curb. Yeah. I want all the sh- notable <laughs> shows that have less Emmys than RuPaul's Drag Race. Well, they have a, they have a new front runner for uh, James Bond. Mm. So there's always been a lot of hubbub about who the next is going to be. Is it going to be a girl, a person of color? Well, um, the front runner right now is a guy named Aaron Taylor Johnson. He w- mm. he's a he's a British white man. Mm. Uh, he was the star of Kick Ass. He was just one of the stars of Bullet Train. Um, yeah, great actor. Uh, so I was just watching Bullet Train, like kind of half. You don't need yeah. the sound up for that How movie. Just turn the sound down. Oh, and you can you can enjoy it. But I was like looking at that guy, and it's like I've never seen that guy before. And I was like, that guy's good. You That's just all tell. I got. Yeah, yeah he can be down. James Bond. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's like August watching a, a movie on a flight or something. Just, mm. yeah, just watch it on mute. You're okay. Well, and and at one time I watched an action movie with that. It was like one of the White House Downs or something. And oh, all the White House Down movies. You don't need sound. <laughs> well, this one you didn't. This one we were watching, and and uh, you went out to like take a call or something, and, and I said, "Oh, I'll pause." And you go, "No, this is what's going to happen." That guy, he's a double agent. He's going to turn in about <laughs> in yeah, about wow. five minutes. James Woods. Because, yeah, and he, he just recited the entire movie to me. He's wow. never seen it. He just knows the formula. So it's a formula. Yeah, you get it. Cheers, twenty eight Emmys. So oh, RuPaul's going to catch him this year. <laughs> yeah. Seinfeld only 10. Wow. Tell Larry David. I'm going to call him. <laughs> Please. That's nuts. Well, Aaron Taylor Johnson, he had a secret audition for James Oh, Bond. they have to do it in secret. They, got, they yeah. have to. Because he's an English white man playing <laughs> James Bond. <laughs> and, and this is a travesty. Yeah, it, go ahead. Yeah, so and he 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 filmed the, uh, the scene of where, you know, he walks into the barrel and shoots the barrel and all the blood. The mm-hmm. blood you know, the the the... the, the classic scene that every James Bond movie has and they were like he's really good doing that how don't I could teach my son to do that <laughs> yeah. like, I wouldn't mean he was good at yes. a good James Bond so the producer's name is Barbara Broccoli and she, she describes this as a, a new reinvention and he's he's most likely going to be the next 007 now other other people rumored to be in the mix was like Idris Elba he would be good he would be yeah. good but yeah. um, I, he might be a little too you old. know who wouldn't be a good James Bond a woman Yes, I which, agree. Which and they what, wouldn't be good Ghostbusters either. No. Oh. Hypothetically, <laughs> Why right. do we have to do that? It's the most... I, Ocean's 15 yeah, or whatever it is. It's the most is. ridiculous yeah. thing. I, we're insane. Yeah. And... Annie don't... was amazing. We didn't need Black Annie. We just right. didn't, right? We don't need, like, you know, Puerto Rican Fiddler. We right. don't need any, well, any We don't need Black version. Karate Kid. Right. Like, make whatever movie you right. want. We don't need to remake we don't, it with a different We don't set need of a genitalia. Jewish James Bond. We, right? No. We don't need Jew Bond. We don't need any of this stuff. <laughs> it's well, like, just, he's a character. Let him be what the author intended. Yeah. yeah. And, um, either, like, Tom Hardy was, was one of them. Um, Henry Cavill, who, who played Superman most recently. Yeah. So, Adam, you're watching on mute, and you're like, I don't know him, but he's good. That's exactly what they want, because they don't want somebody super famous. Mm-hmm. They need somebody, like, right on the cusp. Yeah, like they did with Elvis. Yeah, yeah. They exactly. want somebody no, who... because then you get to lose yourself in, not in the role, in, as an audience. Yeah. You get to actually believe what's happening. You Game, know? Game of Thrones did that, and then one episode they brought Ed Sheeran as a cameo and just turned everybody off the show. Right. Yeah. Yeah, they just threw everyone out. If you know the person, you're like, hey, isn't that Remington Steele as James Bond? You know right. I mean? You don't, almost don't want to know 
Right. Uh, yeah. No, I'm, 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 I'm with you on that. I feel that way about commercial actors. Like, yeah. they go, that guy's a hot commercial actor. Terrible. I saw him in the Hoover. He sells anything. Yeah. Vacuum cleaner commercial. And then he, he played the husband in this other thing, but he played the single guy and that guy. I'm like, why are they using the same Yeah. He doesn't guy? believe in these products. He just yeah. couldn't get a sitcom pilot going. <laughs> All right, let's Different. bring it home. Well, oh, we good. said it all. We said it all. Uh, let me tell you something. This Adam Carolla, and we've said it all. We've done it all, Robin. <laughs> uh, I think we just did two hours. What is this? Yeah. What is this? Two hours? Look at us. Yeah. Wow. Were we entertaining for some of it? Yeah, there were, I always wonder if we were entertained. Oh, yeah, we're, we're getting, getting a lot of yes. down to like a tight 18. Oh, do you edit this yeah. down? Oh, yeah. We're getting yeah, way under 20. Oh, there, God, the where? poor editor of oh, this. Oh, the whole Larry David thing. Oh, God. God. My heard brain, that curve story. I was like oh, two God. giant shears, like gardening shears Your in Israel my head. Your Israel rants can't it's go. It's a good clip. No, no the floor. world needs to hear your yeah. Israel floor. No. Yeah, I was literally editing it while we are doing it. Why don't you do a longer, like Rogan's Four Hours or Howard? Why don't you do a longer? This is excruciating Yeah, this is rough. Well, I do show every day yeah i know but also i've seen i just saw an hour and a half one like what what's is there? two hours usually yeah, yeah, yeah okay so we for just no did reason. it so what are you editing this for was that I'm, a joke i'm a right. i never know you're <laughs> no, so good no you do such a good actor you're just insecure that's all that's the problem <laughs> that's the problem yeah. the larry david story was Everything. gold thank you we'll just tighten it up a little in post oh, <laughs> take a little the air hurts. out of it yeah that hurts. We'll get it down to like talk. we'll get it we can get it under three minutes i'm pretty sure we could we could tighten and it up. then well you know it's got to be digestible i understand such short attention spans because this is really for tiktok all right <laughs> sets in the city that's elon's uh on very youtube funny. follow me on instagram at elon gold and uh, you'll see where i am appearing uh live and uh, curb this season was fun and other things coming up so we're gonna see you in curb this season let's hope all right we'll come back real soon thank you buddy i love let's you never smoke that cigar all right <laughs> can we smoke cigars tonight philadelphia <laughs> yeah, not, let's no, go hang out impossible we'll smoke cigars. done i've already burned too many calories uh, Helium tonight and tomorrow night doing four shows over there. So come on out and say hi. And until next time, Sam Crow for Lon Gold and Chris Maxvetta and Vinny Tortorich saying mahalo. Mahalo.